It's time for Windows Weekly. This week, Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley will be talking about Microsoft's amazing earnings report. Uh, yes, it was a pretty good quarter. Uh, we'll also talk about the Windows Insider program uh, and a leaked Windows 10X build. Edge 88 is here. And then an a cappella group that sings the Windows sound effects. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Our annual Twit survey is going strong. We don't want to miss your feedback. Only a week or two left. So go to twit.tv slash survey21 to take it now before it closes. It helps us understand you better so we can make your listening experience even better. It also helps us find advertisers that you'll like. It only takes a few minutes. Please uh, take advantage of this and go to twit.tv slash survey21. Thanks in advance. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 709. Recorded Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. Master of Soft Numbers. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Udacity. Build your tech skills through industry-leading programs created and recognized by top companies worldwide with a nano degree from Udacity in as little as 12 weeks. Visit udacity.com slash twit and use the coupon code twit at checkout to get 50% off through May 30th, 2021. And by ESET. ESET protects businesses worldwide with internet security products and services backed by world-class research and tech support. Get your free ESET business trial and an interactive demo at business.eset.com slash twit. You'll also save 20% on ESET Protect bundles for a limited time. And by Worldwide Technology. WWT's Advanced Technology Center is like no other testing and research lab with more than half a billion dollars of equipment, including solutions from key partners like Intel Corporation. And it's virtual, so you can access it 24-7. To learn more and get insights into all the ATC offers, go to WWT.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. Mary Jo Foley is here on your right from allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet <laughs> blog. On your left, Mr. in the red trunks, Mr. Paul Therat. From th oh, <laughs> he looked. He checked. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show us. Made you look. Okay, okay. Look, see. everybody. <laughs> Therat.com. He as he came in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, I've got to get this uh, queued up here. Um, <laughs> Because I want to play the first item yeah. from our show today. Kind of fun. Yeah. Somebody ruined this on Twitter. I had this as a surprise. I know. I saw it. Oh, <laughs> you, you already had it ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell us what we're going to hear in a, in a second. So this was sent to me uh, via email from a, a reader, I guess, uh, Evan P. I won't violate his privacy or even try to pronounce his last name, but thank you for that. Uh, it's an acapella group. Uh, that sings w certain Windows sound effects, um, XP and Vista, it looks like. Um, there's actually a few different versions of this video, but this is representative, I would say. This is from Reddit, so that means it's good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's real. By the way, if anybody wants to buy any GameSpot stock, just let me know. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Paul, can you identify these as we go? Yeah, this is the Windows Vista. Oh, oh that's so there. good. <laughs> USB in. <laughs> USB out. <laughs> <Do -do -dum. laughs> error. <laughs> that's the error. Recycle. <laughs> and log off for us. <laughs> wow. Are they yeah. are I they never Korean? Knew recycle had a sound. I didn't know. Does it have a yeah, sound? Like, <laughs> when you <laughs> empty when you <laughs> empty the uh, bin. Yeah. I never yeah. knew that. I didn't. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah, they're really good. They're, like, it's only yeah. their voices, and it's so crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder where they are, who they are. Yeah. Do yeah, we know, know anything about Maybe them? <clears throat> What's that? Do we, we don't know anything about them, huh? I haven't even investigated Looked into it. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just you bring know? us the sounds. Well. Yeah. Can I play you know, one? I, look, someone's got to be the idea guy. I'm just saying. You know how tic <laughs> TikTok has become 
uh, a big uh, shanties, sea shanties have become big on TikTok. Mm. You know yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, security researcher, researcher Rachel Tobach, who is wonderful, um, decided that if we're going to reach the youth of America, we need to do sea shanty infosec. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Information <laughs> security embedded in a sea shanty. I give you Rachel Tobach, ladies and gentlemen. There once was a kid whose passwords laid across all sites. They were the same, a criminal. <laughs> then found their fame by taking that data to go. Soon may a criminal come to steal your pictures and data and run. One day when the crime is done, they'll steal your account and go. The kid then noticed strange behavior. There had been a login failure. Reused password was their traitor. It was already pwned. Soon may a criminal come to steal your pictures and data and run. One day when the crime is done, they'll steal your account and go. Now our friend did quickly learn their lesson. Don't reuse passwords. Turn on pictures and data and run one day when the crime is done they'll steal your account and go isn't that awesome that is awesome uh, and you know she says if we're going to reach the youth <laughs> by the way it's just not right <laughs> that somebody should be a brilliant i mean she's really legendary security researcher and a brilliant right. singer at the same time it's just too much talent I don't like it. I feel like I feel like the lyrics could have been modified slightly to steal your pictures, data, and rum, but that's still pretty good. <laughs> I think I did. You know, the chat room noted that as well. It should be rum, rum, not run. Yeah, rum. Yep. I mean, then it would have been the perfect shanty. <laughs> to steal yeah. your peanut butter whiskey and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I found out the. the the one on the window sounds is a Korean band called May Tree. M A Y T R E. That's lovely. lovely. Also great. Uh, they could do their own little me, uh, shanty. <laughs> There's like a um, uh, a Bee Gees documentary that's on HBO Max now. That's I've, I've been meaning to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. It's excellent, but there's there's an outtake from it that I think I saw on YouTube where they were making us they were doing a song in the studio um, tragedy and they needed an explosion. This is in the late seventies, right? Yeah. So they don't have digital anything. So the way they did it was literally they were like, <laughs> <laughs> they just. So if you listen to that song, it's literally Barry Gibb and maybe one or two of his <laughs> brothers just making an explosion sound with their mouths, and it sounds great. <laughs> Those were the days, really my sound, friends. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, you know. They made the paper crumple sound pretty good. That uh, pop group. That's, that's, that's really what that's what reminded me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, musical version of Windows Weekly. Uh, it's a first. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it. We'll have our own shanty next week for Windows Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's, um, it's such well. a strange thing, but these sea shanties are all over TikTok. They're really good, and they're great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they're great. Um, they are. I'm, I, you know, I know, I know we're not supposed to like TikTok and you know all that, but I love TikTok. That's the that's the name of the episode right there, shanties and sourdough. And I got to tell you, <laughs> both of them, both of them have a time limit they on. They wear they wear <laughs> thin. Yeah, yeah. anything good wears thin eventually. Even the Bee Gees wore thin. Even the Bernie <laughs> memes from last week. They're, now you don't want to uh, see The Bernie them. memes were tired before they even began. I, oh, I enjoyed <laughs> them. No, no idea. Good. I enjoyed them. At I have no time. idea why anyone thought that was a good picture. I, oh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders uh, in uh, big old mittens at the inauguration. Yeah. And then we so even weird. did it. He popped up at our uh, This Week in Google. I, <laughs> I saw it. And yeah. then I did one with Sirachi in Grand Central Station. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you impose both Sirachi or Bernie, or has Sirachi visited Grand Central? Uh, no, Sirachi it was visited. Bernie imposed and Sirachi imposed in Grand Central. <laughs> <laughs> That's a double fake, ladies. Yes. Um, <clears throat> there is big news. Uh, thank you, Microsoft, for doing your quarterly earnings after, <laughs> uh, you know, Tuesday, uh, after our yeah. show was over last week. In fact, the day before our show this week, that makes it a lot easier for us to cover. Yeah. I completely so. forgot it was happening on Tuesday. I was talking to somebody and then it flashed in front of me and I said, I got to go by. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Sorry, get to work. <laughs> I, yeah, didn't realize. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what? So, what is the? You know, what is the? Do I say the bottom line? No, I say the top line. Yeah, Ooh. you could say both. I have to learn. The, I have to learn this financial lingo. So do we, right? right? <laughs> but you know, we always joke about the analysts saying "great quarter, guys." But I almost said it yesterday oh. because <laughs> every single product family. Almost, almost without exception, was up in this quarter. They totally beat estimates, like just blew it out of the water. Like people couldn't even believe it when the numbers came across. They were like, wait, we thought they were going to do well, but not this well in their second quarter. Um, so they had 15.5 billion net income on 43.1 billion of revenues for the quarter, so, up 17%. So their profits right? were more than $5 billion a month, basically. Profit. Boy, nice work if you During a it. pandemic. Well, that's what's interesting. <laughs> yeah. All these companies that have was done a, better as, uh, during the pandemic, right? Yeah, the yeah. profits, I think, were up, I want to say, 30-something, 30 33%, something like that. But um, uh, the, to, to kind of level set this, there, there was a, a, a few-year period where basically every quarter they were averaging roughly 10 to $11 billion in uh, net income and $30 billion in um, revenues. And... It's been going up, obviously, but this past year has been blockbuster yeah. for Microsoft. It really has. But, you know, last last couple quarters before this one, things you could see, like, people were trying to get their foothold. Like, the customers were trying to figure out, like, okay, should we keep spending like gangbusters? Should we really rush to the cloud? We knew people were working from home, but they, there were a lot yeah. of decisions being made about corporate spending. And then yesterday, the, the general manager of investor relations said to me, well, it's been a V-shaped curve. We're back on the upswing. And like pre-COVID, it's over. Like we're in full swing now of people spending money. The, the other like, interesting wow. <laughs> trend here is- From, your, from their mouth to God's ear, I would, that's good news. Because everywhere, here uh, on our advertising, uh, on the radio yeah. show, um, we've seen declines in spending. And it's gotten, every quarter it's gotten gone down. And I'm sure Microsoft has as well. Um, so that's very good news. That's really good Even news. there. Even their advertising with Bing, right, and Dynamics yeah. through LinkedIn, all even those were up. Like, everything was up. That's important so, yeah. to note that all these tech companies have done well, but they've done well in, in particular sectors that are benefiting from the quarantine. Mm -hmm. But in other sectors right. like advertising, they're suffering. They're down. You know, Xbox makes more money because people are stuck at home, as yeah. an example. Right. But Bing does not because people aren't buying as, as much. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Except this quarter, it was like back on track. We're going full steam Good. ahead. <laughs> Good. That's great news. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Like we always say, though, like the way they present the numbers, it's hard to really make definitive statements on some of these things. Like the big one everyone was calling out yesterday was Azure was up 50% year over year. But we don't know up like what From the original what? number was, yeah. right? Yeah. right. Well, <laughs> so yeah. it's like yeah. it yeah. can't be traced back to a number, uh, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> that makes it kind of useless. But even that growth is up, right? Uh, you know, I remember for several quarters in a row, it was seventy-ish percent, but it fell and fell, and you know, as it would, it's a mature business now. Right. But exactly. um, growth is growth. It's I'm growing. Not, yeah, you can't. But it's growing faster than it used to now. It, all yeah. of a sudden, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, there, were, there was also a spate of stories yesterday that finally Azure is bigger than Windows in terms of revenue. And I'm like, how do people know this? We don't know how big Windows is and we don't know how big Azure is. So, right? <laughs> well, we actually, well, we have some idea how big Windows is if I, if I have these numbers yeah, correct. Right? Because supposedly yeah. F, uh, Xbox delivered about $5 billion in revenues. Uh, which was like some kind of a record, I guess. Five billion. Um, wow. First time. We, we right? know that gaming was more than five billion. Wow. Gaming was more. Okay, so um, Surface was two billion. I mean, most yep. of the rest of that is Windows. Yeah, like, good that's point. more personal computing. But most of the rest of yep. the fifteen billion that that uh, business unit uh, collected. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, roughly what is that? What did I say? Seven. I mean, roughly half that. I mean, seven billion. Yeah, Ish. it was funny. I got, I got to ask the director of investor relations again. I'm like, so can we actually say Azure is bigger than Windows? Like, do we have any proof? And he's like, um, no. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like, but you know, if you like look at the SEC statements and you look and you do some back of the napkin math kind of stuff, you could make the case for it, but we're not saying we could, 
you could prove it based on any numbers that we're giving out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the other, um, uh, from sort of a weird reversal of trends, you know, Microsoft has two mm. business units that are mostly cloud services and then one that is not, you know, and that yeah. one that is not is the one we've been describing, uh, more personal computing. That's Windows, Surface, and Xbox, basically. Um, obviously, there are services, and, and going forward, there'll be more of a mix of services. But um, that yeah. part of the business used to be the biggest part of the business, and it's been going down, uh, not dramatically, but, you know, compared to the other two. This past quarter, it was up again, <laughs> you know, the biggest mm -hmm. uh, business yep. unit in Microsoft. Um, but, you know, obviously, Xbox launch was huge. Xbox this year was huge. Uh, Windows mm -hmm. PC sales were up this year, so it yeah. kind of benefited from. I, I what I don't want to call it temporary. I don't think we're going to see this level, uh, you know, a year from now. But um, certainly, there, there was a bump to all of those mm -hmm. businesses from COVID. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We should talk more about the Windows number because it's yes. it's interesting how that breaks out, right? Like, so there's this thing they call Windows yeah. Non Pro and then Windows Pro, and those are both OEM businesses, right? Like so maker. last, yeah, last quarter, um, non-pro, so like consumer was way up, right? And pro was in the minus category. And I was like, wait, isn't that the opposite of what you'd think? You'd think both would be up, right? Because yeah. of the pandemic and people working from home. But what they said last quarter when I asked them about that was, well, companies really aren't sure about spending, right? So, if people want to go out and buy a PC at Best Buy and then like expense it or whatever, or, you know, say, same with education customers, that's how they're doing it. And that's why the non-pro number was up this quarter. The non-pro number was up again. And, but yep. the pro number was down 9% instead of like 20 right. something percent. Right. So um, the reason they they're jazzed about that is they thought, it would be down 20% again this quarter. Like uh, it would just be like tanking. And the fact that it's only down 9% makes them think, okay, this is more proof that we've turned the corner on corporate spending <laughs> during the pandemic. We're, yeah, that's what they said. We're, they we're really happy said that. that we're under double digit losses. Yes. <laughs> or, or that's it. They're like, we or. thought it was going to be 20% loss. Instead, it was a 9% loss. So we are taking that so, as a win. <laughs> I, uh, you know, a couple of things that, I mean, uh, overall <laughs> revenue growth from sales to OEMs or PC makers, right. was uh, yeah. only up 1% year over year. So mm -hmm. when you combine all cool. that, what you get at, what you yeah. get to is kind of flat over last year, which is actually a little yeah. surprising. Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft puts a little asterisk on that. They want to remind people that a year ago, uh, the comparable was high because of the windows seven and a service life cycle was yeah. happening and, you know, more uh, companies and or people were buying PCs to replace those, I guess. So, Maybe this isn't as bad as it looks, um, mm -hmm. but I, uh, and you know, I, I, this is like talking about, you have to really think this through. Uh, Satya Nadella yeah. at the beginning of the comments last night in that post earnings conference call said that we added more, he said, devices running Windows 10 this quarter than ever before. And you're like, oh, wow, that sounds really impressive. And then you're like, well, okay. So Windows 10 is five years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, PC sales were up this year for the first time in f to this level in f over five years. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense because Windows 10 is yeah. still only five years old in this quarter. And okay, <laughs> you know, but obviously yeah. Yeah. Uh, th there were quarters before five years ago or years before five years ago where they actually sold a lot more Windows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just not Windows 10 because it wasn't out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, good point. I, I didn't even like dissect that in my mind when he said it. There's so many well, of those statements is, when you go back and look at them, you're like, yeah. wait, how is that possible, right? <laughs> Microsoft is the master of soft numbers, you know? Yeah, they are. You yeah. really have to, yeah. every time they say anything that compares something to something else, you have to kind of... <laughs> And stop and go back and look at it. You're like, <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, how can they actually, like another thing they've been saying lately is we, we are the biggest, um, what do they say? Enterprise cloud maker. We, we are the biggest, um, commercial cloud vendor. And I'm like, wait, how can they say that? What about Amazon? Oh. Right. No, because Amazon doesn't make up a commercial cloud number, Mary Jo. They, they <laughs> are in a class by themselves and the class leading vendor. No, so wait, we don't have wait. to give you numbers. <laughs> no, you know what they're doing? I, I thought about this last night, like at length. And I'm like, how are they actually making that claim? And then I'm like, oh, wait, that is what they're doing. They're using the commercial cloud number, right? But that's what Google's sure. using too. 
when they're talking about their cloud, they're measuring Google Cloud and G Suite, the products formerly known as G Suite, and they're putting those right. together, and that's Google's cloud number. So that's what Microsoft does too, right? Microsoft takes Office 365 oh, and did Azure. Did Javier and bring this with him to over to Google? Yes, he did. <laughs> Yes, he did. And so the reason Amazon is smaller is because Amazon doesn't have a successful set of software as a service kind of products, right? right? So they can uh, actually make that claim and not be lying. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I I mean, you can always find a statistic, I guess, that makes you look good. You can. can. I'm really stunned, and maybe this will... change in the new administration that the SEC does not crack down on all of this because the whole point of these briefings is to give investors a clear idea right. of what they're buying. <laughs> and uh, and it's the exact opposite. Yeah. It literally <laughs> muddies the water of what's happening at the company enough so that I don't think it is any guidance of any kind for an investor. It's crazy. I know. I've been I, saying, you know, look, I've been complaining about this for years. I, you have. I just want to say I was on the vanguard of this. You were. You were you were at the vanguard of complaints as usual. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> as usual. Right, no, but fine. you know we'll what? You know what the earnings calls are still good for? And I was again thinking about this at length last night. If you if you go back and you look at the transcript of an earnings call, there are hints in there about things. Sometimes we don't know what they're hinting, but there's little mm-hmm. like things if they say something or emphasize something, like if Satya Nadella repeats a phrase several times, you're like, okay, why is he doing that, right? And last night I looked at the transcript and I'm like, he said the word business process, that phrase, like several yeah. times, right? And I'm like, why did he keep repeating that? And he talked about integrating business processes with communication systems. And I'm like, oh, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about the power platform integrating with teams. That's what he's talking about without using the product names, right? But he emphasized that multiple times. Like, And I'm like, there's going to be some big thing coming. Right. That they're going to make yeah. some big announcement well, about this. <laughs> and there's an Ignite show coming. So it actually makes I know. sense. It does. You know? It does. But you go you back and you look at like. Say? What? I'm sorry. A lot uh, in that earning the transcript what? is uh, Surface. So if you yeah, search for key phrases like yeah. Windows, Xbox, yeah. Surface, Office. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll see all of them come up a bunch of times, except for Surface. Surface is mentioned only in passing. They blew right through yeah. it. Um, I, this is a weird thing to say. A surface had what I believe, which was its first $2 billion quarter. It was. Yep. Huge disappointment. <laughs> um, how, because first of all, last year in the same quarter, they just missed 2 billion, just missed. Um, well, surface and that's a holiday were, quarter, right? Yeah. Also. Yeah. Okay. Right? Which is fine. You, you know, we get, they get the yeah. bump in the quarter, in that quarter. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but surface revenues were only up 3% year over year in a year in which the pandemic happened and yeah. triggered massive PC sales and it was a holiday quarter. Mm-hmm. Service revenues were only up 3%. Mm-hmm. I, that's, yeah. that to me is crazy. And by the way, they never m- mentioned it again. That was all that was ever yeah. said about it. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I was, yeah, you can, you should look it up. It's interesting how little they mentioned yeah. service. Um, I would have thought uh, there would have been better news there given uh, there's some new products. I mean, not that Surface Duo would have uh, done much for them revenue-wise, yeah. but you know, Surface Laptop Go, I think, was kind of an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. that's, I know it's it's interesting to me that they didn't uh, do better than that. Yeah, that's I. You know, when they said first time over two billion, I'm like, oh, that's good, I guess. You know, like they've turned the two yeah. billion quarter like forever. They were like a billion plus dollar per quarter mm-hmm. business, right? Um, yep. I mean, I think this quarter will be kind of telling as well, but um, yeah, I guess we'll see. And then, of course, they're probably going to be on a non-standard product release mm-hmm. cycle this year, I would hope, um, and just put yeah. out stuff. You know, they have stuff ready to roll, it seems to me. Um, so hopefully that yeah. comes out sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The thing they couldn't stop talking about was gaming, but I understand <laughs> <Right>. why. <laughs> Yeah, but, I, I was thinking this is an earnings call where they're an analyst too. Like analysts, you might get one gaming question per an, earnings call, if right. that. Right? They, they never seem interested in like what's going on with Xbox. And, and this time it was like, wait, har- Xbox hardware was up like eighty six percent or some crazy number, right? <laughs> yeah, but you got you have to know that I, first of all. So 
if you look at the release cycle during the Xbox One timeframe, those a yeah. new version came out every I think it was two years, right? Until mm -hmm. after the last one, so we we it was actually yeah. a longer than usual delay between console releases, and uh, you would expect last year, you know, the build up to this release to have been the worst year, you know, the, in in this cycle for hardware yeah. sales, and it was. Uh, other than COVID changing things a little bit, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they could have made as many consoles as they could have sold, this could have been an even better quarter, you know? And did and you now, see, they I, said, did you see what they said about the shortage on consoles? No. Well, um, well what was it? I mean, I... They're, it's going to continue through the next quarter. They're not going to have enough in the oh, next yeah, quarter. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so and they, they we know why, they, because Chris Capicella told us, Chip, sort, chip well, they, shortage, chip shortage, chip shortage. La <laughs> last year, no, last year, um, someone from, I don't know if it's the CTO of, someone from the Xbox org said April would be the. Yeah. Which, so that would be you know, that. one more quarter. Yep. <sighs> yeah. So that means gaming revenue uh, is expected uh, to be up double digits in the current quarter, uh, like mm -hmm. big, like 40%, you know, versus yeah. whatever. Yep. Uh, and then uh, content and services in the mid twenty percent range too. So yeah, they they they're, they're, they're going to ride this one out. I mean, maybe in some ways that's smart. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what to think about Xbox exactly. There's a lot of confusing stuff going on here. Like, obviously, you know, hardware sales are up. Okay, great. Um, temporary, you know, obviously. Um, yeah. Xbox subscriber base. Uh, not it's they don't differentiate between paying and non-paying because most of them don't mm -hmm. pay so 100 million i guess that sounds good 18 million on xbox game pass right um yeah. there are three different versions of xbox game pass so we you know but these are higher price subscriptions 10 to 15 dollars mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. up from 15 million in september quarter and i think it was 10 million probably back in whatever that was march or april um, so it's, you know, it's good. I mean, I think when you look at that graph between Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live, uh, as it shifts over time, Xbox Game Pass becomes the subscription, right? And even now yeah. it probably is the more profitable mm -hmm. or, well, it's hard to say, like I said, they don't break it out, but, right. um, they're getting to the point where I think Xbox Game Pass is going to surpass Xbox Live Gold if it hasn't from a revenue perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything was up though. Like server products, like on-prem server yeah. products up. Yeah. Everything. Ev they like just Everything. blew the quarter out. <laughs> Everything. It's kind of nice Everything. when you have something like that to say. Apple, start Apple's going to have its results so. uh, tomorrow, I think. Or maybe it's today, late, at 2 p.m. today. And oh, uh, is it? Jeez. it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the biggest yeah. quarter ever it's of all time. It's going to be the same thing, but more. <laughs> yeah, 100, <laughs> well, yeah. 100 billion I mean, in revenue is the expectation, so. Wow. 100 billion. Oh yeah. Jeez Louise. <gasps> what is that? What's that? Billion. Almost twice what? Uh, it is more than twice. More than twice. It is. Yep. Jeez. I know. Like I said, right? Microsoft was at the 30 billion level for at least a couple of years in a row. Right. Every quarter. Yeah. You know? Dvorak used to say, <laughs> Apple may be good, but I'd rather have Bill Gates' wallet. Well, <laughs> Yeah, Why maybe. does he sound like the penguin from the Batman <laughs> movies? <sometimes? laughs> he does sound like that in real life. Come on, he does. <laughs> uh, that's not fair to quote somebody's quotes from 10 years ago, because that, that's really what happened. It's completely shifted. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Uh, although, <laughs> Microsoft improved massively, too. It was flat for so Yeah, long. I mean, Microsoft was yeah. never in danger of being bankrupt. Um, yeah, that's a good so point. They haven't, I guess they haven't as <laughs> fallen as hard as that. That's a good point. Yeah. I, ironically, uh, Intel had a good quarter too, which, you know, I don't know how many more yeah. of those they have in them, but. <laughs> so, yeah. I, by the way, I'm doing a, Intel contacted me initially before the holidays just to gauge my interest and then more recently uh, to uh, discuss this further. But Intel is starting kind of a competitive push back against Apple and M1, which I'm very happy to see, only because I feel like they've been very passive and quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are certainly some, you know, there are always, of course, there's still advantages on the Intel side. It's not like Intel just disappears. But I mean, I feel like Intel has faced these kinds of challenges in the past, whether it was like 64-bit computing or mobile computing. And uh, they kind of bought their way or licensed their way into uh, relevance again. I mean, we'll see how they handle this transition. But the COVID thing that lifted Microsoft last year also lifted Intel. And I think I got to look this up, but um, 
I think generally speaking, yeah, uh, their PC business is about half of their revenues. The other half is is their data center business, right? Usually that's the kind of split. Um, and this past quarter, um, Intel's PC business was over uh, over fifty percent. It was up nine nine uh, percent. Again, the COVID before. bump, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. it's eleven eleven billion in revenues just for PCs. Yeah, PC sales are up. Intel sales are up. It makes sense. Yep. Yeah, but okay, you know, but, they, but they also uh, the, I think where they're going to get hurt the most in the future is the the data center end, right? Right. Um, I think yeah. this is where yeah. the growth is in the future, and I. Th this is the thing where ARM's going to cause them some problems. I so I think so too. Also, yeah. owning those big, expensive fabs. Um, yeah. that's, yes, uh, that's yes. tough. Right. You know. Uh, yeah. And I, I bet we in the next few weeks we're going to hear something about that. Because Gelsen, the they, new I'm CEO, sure there's some SEC stuff yeah. around the new CEO, but yeah, um, mm -hmm. they've put off a decision to use uh, third-party fabs for some things. I think we're going to. Oh, yeah. yeah, about that very quickly. They, yeah. They've said that until Gelsinger uh, sits in the big chair, which is next month, mm -hmm. they're not going to yeah, make any decision. Right. It's up to him yeah. to make. And uh, But you know what he's going to say. I mean. Yeah, it's yeah time to stop yeah. screwing around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lack yep. of a better term. Um, and uh, he's yeah. also the guy who said, you know, and <laughs> there's been some debate because it was at an all-hands meeting and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, John Gruber at Daring Fireball said, you know, this is in jest. This isn't a knock against Apple, but said, you know, there's a lifestyle company in Cupertino that, that we're going to go hard against or something like that. And uh, right. people interpreted that as a put down of Apple. And in fact, uh, oh, not at all. I think not. I think it's, it's a put down of Intel. Yeah. There, there's a company whose primary business isn't the only thing we do and they're beating <laughs> and us. And they're beating us. In that, that, that's what that really yeah, means. That's exactly right. right. <laughs> and it's yep. important uh, if you're going to, lead Intel into the future that you recognize where you're It's like, um, I behind. went to a cupcake store this morning and it turns out they're making microprocessors and they're actually better than ours somehow. And <laughs> I don't understand. News. We don't make cupcakes, but we do make the microprocessors. Yeah. Can we do that better than the cupcake? Company? Yeah. <laughs> George Burns always said, it's a shame the only people who know how to run the country are barbers and cab drivers. I feel a little bit like <laughs> a, one right. of those, like, well, I know how to run right. Intel. Here's what you have to do. <laughs> Um, I have some, you always do this. Car, you, you start having a couple of drinks, you're talking to friends or family, whatever it is, and you solve all the problems of yeah, the world. Yeah, it's and easy. then eventually it's yeah. like, hey guys, um, I know you think we've solved all the problems, but like <laughs> maybe we should just move be on. More to, to this than we <laughs> yeah fully be a little gather. trickier than yeah. we thought. If only we could remember what we agreed on last night uh, in the yeah, next morning. Exactly. Let's you know, face we could, it, we could cure the world. That's why we've chosen careers as pundits. <laughs> yes. yes, it's a it's armchair a nice armchair quarterback. Uh, armchair quarterback. Leo, Leo, I did not choose this career. This <laughs> career chose me. Okay, I just want to be clear oh, about okay. that. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> How delusional, Paul! So sweet. It's, 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 uh, it's like, like it's like when a child fails, you have to act like it was good. Look at him. Good. <laughs> good for you. Nice. All right, let's take a little break. We have more to talk about. Mary Jo said, "Everything comes in threes. Well, the third is dun, coming. Dun, 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 dun. But first, uh, I want to welcome a new sponsor, great sponsor, somebody I know you guys know well, oh Udacity, to the Paying table. Them now, Leo. Yeah. Who isn't? Mm -hmm. uh, you d I, I actually joined Udacity when they first started. Sebastian Throne started it. From uh, He left Google, said, I, I want to create something that, that uh, helps people gain these tech skills uh, and make it accessible worldwide. It really is... I think the greatest, one of the greatest successes of the internet is this fact that you could be a kid anywhere, unable to pay for, uh, you know, a four-year university or technical college, but you could still get that education affordably uh, as long as you can, you know, get, use a computer in the internet, maybe go to the library and do it. Udacity is empowering people to get amazing skills. It improves the world, really. There are a lot of tech jobs out there right now. I mean, listen to what we're talking about here. Uh, the quarantine has actually catapulted tech into the forefront. Uh, and if you're looking for a new job or a, getting started in life, looking for a career, Udacity is the world's best, fastest, most efficient way to get those skills tech companies want. And they do it with these nano degrees. A Udacity nano degree program, I don't, I, this is unique to Udacity, U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. Um, 
it bridges the gap between your what you want in life, your career goals, and what you're learning right now. You can get a, learn a suite of employable skills in, I think, a very effective format. They partner with industry leaders and experts who understand, because they have direct connection to it, what skills are applicable to today's job market, the most in-demand skills. Uh, the courses are... It's so much better than say, and I know a lot of people say, oh, I'll just watch it on YouTube. This is so much better. Once you enroll as a student in a specific course, if there's a, they, they channel you through. It's a very polished uh, and refined way to do this. You view the in online course, but you also get a series of projects, support courses that help you develop job-relevant skills, and you get coaching from real live mentors. Um, the nano degree program may include classroom mentorship, real human help, <clears throat> Pro your projects. They're reviewed by qualified professionals. You get personalized code reviews, access to qualified mentors anytime, 24 seven, because it's all over the world. Udacity has users in 160 plus countries, 13 million registered users, Paul and I, among others. 1.3 million plus projects completed and passed. And the, there have been 150,000 nano degree certificates earned. But don't think this is a, you know, a factory. You get this personalized learning and education programs in everything. You want to, you, you think self-driving cars are the next big thing? You can get a nano degree in that and learn everything you need to know. AI, cloud computing, data science, autonomous systems, programming development, product management, digital marketing. They have some free products too. There's lots of free stuff. In fact, if you go to the website, including, I think this is great. They can help you polish your GitHub profile. That turns out to be, as a programmer, that's one way people, right, Paul? That's one way people get jobs is yep. they go and look and, and see what you've done. Uh, your LinkedIn profile. Dip your toe in with Udacity's free courses, but they also offer flexible payment options. And the most important thing you can learn at your own pace on your own schedules. You'll see when you go to a Udacity course, they'll say, well, if you spend 10 hours a week on this, it's going to take you so many weeks. But my only bit of advice for people would be they have tons of free courses. So if you're not sure you want to pay for a nano degree, try it. To, uh, do one of the free ones. And I've done many, many, yeah. many free courses. And yeah. the intro to JavaScript, for example, is one of them is free. It's really amazing uh, what, yeah, what, what really good. Sebastian and his team have uh, done over the last decade. Um, there are some testimonials online. I have one in front of me, Francisco Gutierrez, a uh, guy who wanted a better life, couldn't afford, as is often the case, a four-year degree. He had taken programming courses at the community college, but they never translated into, into, into a job, job-ready skills. So he participated, and this you're all invited to participate in the Grow with Google Udacity Challenge, got a full scholarship right on, I'm, this actually, I'm, tears, I get teared up a little bit when I hear about this. For the mobile web specialist nano degree, he took the nano degree. It, it went step by step, got an internship with Microsoft, was offered a full-time job as a software engineer. He is full-time at Microsoft right now, thanks to Udacity. It's just, it's, uh, this is, and this, there are thousands of stories like that. Check out Udacity for Enterprise if you are a business and you want to offer this to your employees. I think it's a really great thing for a business to give their employees, um, you know, the option to take some classes so that you can become, uh, you know, a better employee, a more well-rounded person. It's just, I think it's a great thing to do. You, if you're interested in doing that, Udacity for Enterprise. Um, get the education that broadens your horizons. U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Udacity. It's audacious. Udacity.com slash twit. By the way. I should mention this now through May 30th, 2021, 50% off, 50% off when you use the offer code TWIT. So please do use that offer code so they know you saw it on Windows Weekly. Udacity.com slash TWIT. The offer code is TWIT and the discount will be applied as you uh, check out. So yeah, check out the free offerings. There's lots of them. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're ready to get that nano degree and get a great job, Udacity.com slash TWIT. The offer code is twit and somebody in the chat room is saying and I I should mention this lowercase twit <laughs> it says uppercase uh, both in the URL and the offer code uh, on our lower third we'll fix that um, 
And I think Udacity is going to fix that. But for right now, just lowercase twit. Udacity.com slash T-W-I-T, lowercase, coupon code, twit, lowercase. I think the coupon code is lowercase. Yeah, it's case sensitive. So uh, I apologize for that. We'll, we'll fix that. Udacity.com slash twit. I took, uh, I, I should go back and look. I think Python courses, um, general computer science courses, there's some great stuff in there. And a lot of free stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot of free stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's on, how you can gauge it. I, I think their instructors are great. I think the courses are great. That's the I key. It's really well. Yeah, really I mean, well there's a lot. You can go, you know, you can go to YouTube <laughs> and learn a lot of stuff. But it's but what you want is something quality. And more important, I don't know about you, Paul, but being forced to do a project <laughs> and, 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 yeah. have it, and have somebody review your code, that's, that's yeah. the difference, really. I mean, yep. otherwise, I just go, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. <clears throat> what is the, oh, uh, it all happens in threes. What, mm -hmm. what happens in threes? People leaving yeah. um, happens in threes. So we had talked in the previous few episodes about Brad Anderson leaving to go to Qualtrics then Julia White leaving to go to SAP. And then this week we found out Kirk Del B, I think his last name is Del Benny, how you pronounce that, yep. um, who's been at Microsoft for years, like close to 30 years, I think, uh, is leaving. He is right now the corp, the vice president, uh, executive vice president and head of corporate strategy and core services, member of the senior leadership team, which is like the inner circle at Microsoft. He is going to be leaving at the end of June and he's retiring. Um his wife is a rep for the state of Washington. So I wonder, I just wonder if they're going to do something in politics because oh, interesting. in between Kurt Delben, Delbene left Microsoft to go try to help fix the Affordable Care Act ah. website oh, under he, healthcare.gov. Did he go to USDS? He worked, yeah, he Matt worked Cutts. for them. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And then when he came out, he came back out of that. He went to Madrona as a venture capitalist and then came back to Microsoft to head up corporate strategy and core services. So he's been at Microsoft first heading up a lot of the office products and then came back and did corporate strategy. He is um, not going to be replaced. He His job is going to be divided up among different executives. Some of it's going to Scott Guthrie and some to Amy Hood. Um, so everyone's asking what does this mean? Three of them leaving, you know, in succession. <laughs> Is there trouble yes. at Microsoft? Yes. Right? What does Everybody, this mean? I'm, I'm getting so many emails about this. Like, what do you really, but what do you really think is happening? Right. And my, my genuine response to this is I think these three things are unrelated. I don't think yep. any of them indicate a problem. Um, I think, I really do think Brad Anderson wanted to move back to Utah to spend more time with his grandchildren. I really think Julia White I don't know her exact reasons for leaving, but sure. SAP has a new CEO um, and he seems very ambitious and he's hiring a lot of new people. So if you're, you know, a high up in cloud marketing at Microsoft, I'm sure you, she got an offer she couldn't refuse. And Kurt Delbaney is retiring. I, I really don't think these three things are connected. And I don't think. But how, how, in how many ways is the company falling apart right now? <laughs> exactly. I know. No, you know, they're only making a billion emails. dollars a week. Of course, right. people yeah. are going to exactly. leave, you know. I know. They're like, you know, we know you can't say it on your blog, but what do you really think is happening? I'm like, no, guys, I really if I thought there was something happening, I would write a story about it. <laughs> Trust yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I think I think you know we just passed the mid year mark for Microsoft. Like end of December is the middle of their fiscal year, and at that time, a lot of changes happen. There's like many reorgs within different teams. This is when your lead, your managers come to you sometimes at Microsoft and they say, "All right, what do you see yourself doing in the next part of your career? Like, where do you want to go? What what team do you want to work on?" So it's a time. I think, at, you know, a lot of people have a moment where they're like, do I want to stay with Microsoft? Do I want to move teams or am I done? Like, that's it. You know, so I, I just think it's a natural time for people to be leaving. Yeah. I genuinely do. Also, Rich, yeah. uh, Rich Turner. Yeah. Also I leaving. put him on there. What? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, I put what? him Wait, under. What? under yeah. <laughs> What's that? I put him under the Windows segment. Okay, so Rich Turner, you know, we've had him on Windows Weekly before. He's the guy who helped 
bring about Windows Subsystem for Linux at Microsoft and also Terminal, uh, Windows Terminal. But he's not leaving, leaving. He's going to Project Reunion, which I think is really good. I think they need to have some more um, help and governance. <laughs> I was curious how you were going to phrase that. Some, um, I don't know, adult supervision. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, so that's said, uh, that's good, I think, right? It's really yeah. good, right. So I, th I think it's good. He said in his blog post about this, my new team owns much of Win32 <laughs> plus some very cool upcoming quote stuff. So he owns like the input stack, windowing, display, direct 2D, direct write, all these like levels underneath where Microsoft has to figure out how do you bring the Win32 base together with the UWP base and make it all one happy Family in a uh, reunion. You do it with C++, <laughs> Mary Jo. It's going to be great. <laughs> right. I'm dying to see what he does. Um, and maybe once he gets his feet wet, we can co coerce him to come on Windows Weekly again and talk about yeah, reunion. Maybe, the, maybe in the build time frame, there'll be some info. Oh, I would That'd be, be cool. I would be thrilled with that, actually. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. I already time put he dealers was out to it, So Last um, time he was on, he was talking about the WSL, right? The Windows subsystem for Linux. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was in charge yeah. of that. And amazing us so with I, his British accent, which we were all confused by. <laughs> I think this is good. I really think it. I think it's um, a positive for Project Reunion because I feel like you know they have a lot of good goals and they've been pushing forward, but they're kind of slow right now. And they're I feel like their roadmap keeps getting pushed out, pushed out. Deliverables are like kind of trickling out, and they're being very transparent about what they're doing. But I feel like they need some oomph. Like, let's go, right? <laughs> it's definitely been uh, marred by delays, I would say. They don't, I would, I'm yeah. pretty sure they wouldn't yeah. describe it in that fashion. But, um, uh, yeah, you know, this plus what's going on with the Maui stuff, I think mm -hmm. it, it, it collectively is kind of the future of what I guess we'll call it native app development. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's a big issue. I mean, I'm, I'm curious to see how this comes together. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, hopefully... This is a good, this is not a leaving out, away from the company, but a leaving to a new position. Yeah. Rich. You'd <laughs> almost say he is the, like the crisis guy, right? It doesn't every company have somebody that they, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, uh, yeah, not, not to imply there's something wrong with reunion, but yeah. the guy that well, they put is. in when they want to, <laughs> the same thing just happened well, at I mean, Apple. I, I, uh, one, yeah. one of their big guys got moved to a, and they didn't say special project. And I really think it's, Hey, yeah, we, something this they is had important. wanted to come together. Yeah, and we're going to put yeah. a big shot. You know, somebody a, yeah. a fixer in charge uh, yeah. because sure. we want this to go somewhere. So I, that's why I'm encouraged. I like reunion. Yeah, yeah and, and WSL yeah. and Terminal are both really strong projects. Um, yep. Windows reunion or not? Project reunion is a. Um, you know, potentially it's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Deal. I think yeah. it is so. right. Their, their heart is in the right place. It's just, I'm sure, hard to pull all this together. <laughs> I, this circle is not going in a square hole. But, you know, we're going to keep trying. Yeah, so. right. right. Um, yeah. Let's talk uh, Windows. Somebody in the chat room is asking, and I'll get this in now. Yep. Uh, is, there an, is there an issue? This is coming from JoJo Dancer. With all the people stuck in uh, Windows 19... Oh, you know, 1903 and 1909. Yeah. Um, who and I, I'm one of them. Who in some of my machines who just cannot get yeah. to more Didn't recent versions. Update, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, that was a big <laughs> sigh. No, I, I, we I mean, both are I, like. Is, um... Well, is there a problem? Is, is kind it of a problem? Interesting way. Or maybe so, not. Maybe not. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. If you look at those uh, add duplex numbers we get every month. Um, you can see the shift happening. Um, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but you know, the last three versions now are collectively most of what's out there. Right. So, um, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't imagine there's too many people stuck on 1903 because 1909 is such an obvious update there an easy update. But, you know, once you get into the 2004, you know, getting all the way to the end is pretty quick. I just happened to notice might have even been yesterday, just not because they don't use it every day. But the Surface Go 2 was updated to uh, 20 H2 from 1909, right? So uh, it had been stuck on 1909 for a while. Uh, but no, I, I, look, I, I don't, unless there's something very specific. As long as you don't specific, run out of support, right? 
That's the, the yeah, only yeah, worry yeah, you yeah. really have is running out of support. Like, and when and when you get up, you know, fairly close to the end of support of a Windows 10 release, Microsoft will will kind of forcibly of upgrade start, you, yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> There's, Unless you have hardware that is in, that is not possible. Remember, we had a bunch of those people at the beginning of Windows 10 who said, yeah. they told me I can't upgrade and I'm going to run out of support. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're just, by the way, I, no man's I just looked at the numbers <laughs> um, just yeah. to kind of verify this. 1903 is only on 7.1% of Windows 10 computers as of the end of last year. Um, between uh, yeah, but that's like a hundred million is, computers. I mean, it's not a small number. Okay, but I mean, but <laughs> yeah. but again, it's you know, like uh, 1909 is on 33 percent. Going from 1903 yeah. to 1909 should be a no-brainer, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. or very very simple, easy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, 2004 is the biggest already. You know, with 40 yeah. over 40 percent. I guess so I, people are. There's two things going on. Uh, yeah. You know, computer users <laughs> probably have a higher percentage of OCD. <laughs> people than yeah. the general population. And so those people are completists. They want, I want to be on the latest one. Why can't I be? Yeah. There is though a legitimate concern at, about uh, running out of support, right? Yeah, there is. Coming, there, coming there, May there 1909 is, is done. I, I, if you have a reasonably recent computer, I don't think that's going to be, that's not how this ends, you know? It shouldn't be how it happens, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now we think some sometime in the next few months you'll get 21H1, which will be a cumulative update to 20 20H2. So another very right. small update, we think, right? So I don't know. It should be a fairly easy upgrade path for people who are stuck on older versions. Like we, we don't have any major new versions coming until later this year, as, yeah. as long yeah. as they stick to the roadmap. You know, that, that itself is unprecedented. They've never it delivered is. three small updates like that in a row. Nope. I know. Um, the one thing I did notice on that 20H2 upgrade on the uh, Surface Go 2, which we, we know to be the case, but it's just interesting when it happens. You know, if you go from 2004 to 20H2, it's a cum you know, cumulative update. It's easy. Mm -hmm. If you go from uh, 1909 to 20H2, it's a, it's a feature update. You know, you have That's to, big. it's the big yeah. prod takes yep. 40 minutes or whatever. It takes a while, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as you start doing these, once you get into this path, once you hit, 2004, 20H2, you know, the next one, the 20H1 will be just a, will be the simplest. You won't even notice it. So you're, you like think getting that a COVID vaccination, it's, it's, it's okay. People will get updated. Uh, I think they will. Yeah. yeah. I do think Before they will. Before it becomes an yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen, this will be the biggest news story in our world. Uh, if Microsoft draws some kind of a line in the sand with some, number of computers and says, yeah, we're not doing that. And, oh, and we were also taking that system out of support. Right. I just don't. Well, they kind of did that a while ago, right? With the Intel processor thing, right? <laughs> yeah, no, right. But a very special that? case. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, uh, not, that was not as kind of a mess. Yeah. No. And they don't want to leave people behind, right? They want you to be current for security reasons right. and other reasons too. I mean, the, it's not like Microsoft wants you to have to go buy a new PC some people think that, like I've, I've had people say, yeah, you know, they, sure. they just want me to have to go buy another PC. I'm like, yeah, you know, they don't really care about that. They don't really yeah. care that much about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think people will get upgraded. I think, I think it's, you, you just never know when they're going to push you unless you come right up against the end of support and then they will forcibly it's, upgrade It's funny you. that there are people pining for it because, and I don't I mean to use this term in a mean way, but a normal person like my wife, a non-technical person would be annoyed if this ever actually happened, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, most people just use the computer to get work done. They go on with their lives. They don't really think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think people that's who true. Listen to the show or read our sites or, you know, mm -hmm. going to windows update every day and saying, well, how come I don't have They're 20 seekers. what's going yeah. on? They're seekers. Yeah. 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 Well, how else are they going to get the new feature experience pack? I ask you. Actually. So <laughs> that's not actually clear because. Among the many confusing things that are happening right now in the Insider program, uh, back in December, they started testing this thing called Windows Feature Experience Packs, right? And uh, I believe this is like the fourth way you can update things on your Windows 10 PC now because mm -hmm. we have feature updates, quality updates, which are cumulative updates, app updates in the store, and Windows Experience Packs, which are what? <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of a way to update system components as if they were apps, meaning out of band with the OS releases, right? So yep. um, the, the I have to look this up because it was so silly, but 
when they did the first one, the first test in the, uh, what is it? The beta or dev, is it beta or dev? I think it's dev channel. Nope. It's beta. What is it? <laughs> I should probably, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> they're testing beta. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Beta. Sorry. Yeah. They're doing it in the insider program. So, um, uh, there was an improvement to the screen snip experience, which they never described, and then support for split virtual keyboards when the PC was used in portrait mode. That's what they did in December. So you're like, okay, well, that's not very major. And now we have another one. And this one <laughs> is one thing, and they never even described it. It's some kind of a, <laughs> it's a, another improvement to the screen snip feature. It's like, yeah. uh, also they took away a feature temporarily because they discovered a bug with it. We don't have to worry about that one too much, but um, I, I mean, I don't know. I know. You uh, know what? We, there's not a not, lot. Uh, there's not a yeah. lot in the feature experience pack yet anyway, right? Like snipping tool, right. text input panel. There was a thing called the shell suggestion user interface. So it's not like a bunch <laughs> of features. It's not like notepads in there or anything, you know? It's like. Yeah, well. I know. I, mean, I shouldn't give I them that idea. Argue, but, no, well, by the way, it could be, right? There's no reason they couldn't improve notepad this way. Um, so No, Paul, doesn't need improvements. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Bug fixes, whatever. Um, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, this language has been in Windows for a couple of years now, or at least over a it year. It is. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you go into the system, whatever it's called, system settings, about you'll see, see what you have. <laughs> your version of Windows is to some level of a Windows feature experience pack. I, they have never explained it, ever. Nope. What that means, what it entails, they've never talked about it. Um, so that's kind of weird. And then, yeah, it's not really clear whether these things apply to multiple versions of Windows 10, right? So mm -hmm. this is an answer. Someone out there may actually know the answer to this, but if you're in Windows 10 version 1909, for example, and you go and you look at your system uh, settings panel there, you'll have some version number. And if I'm on 20H2 and I look at, is it possible for us to be on the same feature pa mm -hmm. experience pack Feature version? pack. <laughs> Maybe. And if it isn't, yeah. is it possible that, that they'll release the same updates across multiple versions? I don't know. And the reason I don't know, yeah. it's not because I'm not paying attention. It's because they don't really talk about it. There's no way to no. know. You know what? So they've said um, the idea is they're trying to get it so that these things could go through Windows Update, right? And that you could get yeah. regular updates to feature experience back. But then they also said... You could get it through the store, like the the apps that are in the feature experience pack well, would be updatable through the store, right? So I'm like, so wait, well, which he, one he, is it? <laughs> right. I mean, so yeah, jeez. Remember in Windows Eight? Let's here's a little bad memory for everyone to remember. For one version, <laughs> we were going to get system updates through the store, right? And it happened when yeah. you went from Windows Eight point oh to. 8.01 probably, you had to get that through the store. And then future updates were back in Windows Update. It was crazy. Anyway, the, yeah. the, re, the store thing is what brings this up in my mind. Because if there's some version of the Your Phone app, right, that adds some feature, whatever it is, it may debut first. Well, it will debut first probably in the Insider program. But at some point, it gets added to not just the most recent version of Windows, but the whatever versions are still supported. Like you could have, like those apps do get updated to the same level on different versions of Windows. So if we're talking about a screen snip application, which is part of Windows, couldn't they do the same thing there? Mm. Through a feature experience pack or whatever the stupid thing is called? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. probably. It would be nice right? to have somebody explain what the thinking is. And <laughs> Once again, I'd yeah. like to offer our services. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something I feel like we could uh, The help explainers. With. Next yeah. on The Explainers. <laughs> Excla we'll just stand there no, back remember, to back with our arms crossed. <laughs> I remember yeah. when we first noticed Feature Experience Pack a year ago, and I, I went to Microsoft. I'm like, hey, what is this thing that's on people's PCs? And they're like, we're not talking about that. I'm like, so wait, it's on mm. people's PCs, though. Like, it's already there. And they're like, no, we're not yeah, saying anything about it. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm like, how, how can you not say it? It's like, People see it. They want to know what's on what's on there. And mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, we're not ready to talk about it yet. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, is it here in we are. I think it's, it might be in another place, too. I think when you go, what, what's the new way to look at about? <laughs> I always look for yeah, about. Yeah, so you my... right-click on the start menu and choose system. Yeah. It's the system yeah. page of the settings yeah. app. And, it's about and you can see it's it right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, under Windows specifications, mine is Windows 10 Pro. It's version 20H2 and it experience. <laughs> so there's edition version experience, Windows feature yeah. pack, and then it's some huge number. Yeah. 120.2212511, whatever. 
That's what I have too. Yeah. On Windows 10 Home. Yeah. So it would be interesting to me. I, I just wouldn't know this, I guess. But if you were on 2004 and 1909, is it possible you could have the same Windows Feature Experience Pack version? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's literally impossible. I'd yeah. like to know. I don't know. I know. It would be nice to know that. Especially for your book, <laughs> you would like to know. Yeah. I just want to know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's like, there's so much <laughs> stuff like this in Windows. Like, um, yeah. you know, what settings sync? You know, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, uh, I feel not, like not that's slowly becoming clearer, but not clear enough. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. How's your um, Windows 10X install going, Paul? Do you still run it? Is it <laughs> I mean, I have it in a VM. So <laughs> <clears throat> what I did do is there are, someone uh, posted a video of it running natively on a Surface Pro 7. I thought oh. that's kind of interesting. Oh. How do we make that work? Um, and I don't know if it was that someone or someone else, but someone has posted the instructions. Um, they are not, um, they're not easy, <laughs> I yeah. guess would be the way to put it. <laughs> yeah. It's a complex, I haven't done it yet. I did download the, whatever the file, it's not an ISO, but whatever it is. An You're going to do it though. Whatever. I am. Yeah. I'm going to definitely yeah. going to do it, but I looked at the, <laughs> it took a long time to download. It's like one of those mega download things with, um, download limits attached to it. So it took like the better part of a day, but. Um, I didn't really look at the instructions until the, then the thing downloaded. I'm like, here we go, baby. And then I opened it up and I was like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you know, uh, that happens to me all the time because I, you know, I'm inquiring minds and I always want to try stuff. Yeah. And I have to say, when I see something that complex, I almost always know I will fail yeah. and I will have regretted trying. And even if I can get it working, well, it's going to be shaky. So I just, I usually yeah. don't do stuff like that. I mean, I, I'm definitely doing it. There's not enough and time the in the world to do all that stuff. Yeah. You're gonna no, do, it's but not you because I'm to. like particularly, I'm not like super technical or anything. It's that yes, you I noticed. Are. No, not really. But well, I noticed that one of the co-authors of this install guide is Raphael. <laughs> so well, you can always call, him, you, got, you, you, got, you know, got somebody in the business. You can, uh, you can call Yeah, him. I'm going to have him so, uh, step me through so this. So, you know, um, Microsoft has... Windows 10 X hosted internally on different surfaces like this. Right. They have it. So I wonder if this one that's on Surface Pro 7 leaked from inside Microsoft where somebody was hosting it, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know the origin of this. It yeah. could be that it literally is the one that was the leak build that they that use. Someone has. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a lot of trickiness to this. So for example, if you, um, if you had like a Surface Pro 7 and you, wanted to um, just blow it away and you you downloaded like the the bait you know the the version of Windows 10 from the Microsoft website made a USB key installed it from scratch and you brought the thing up the first time there would probably be a lot of drivers that weren't were missing right and you yeah. could probably get a bunch of them from Windows update and that would probably work okay and then you could also download this big installable device driver pack that they make for businesses that would just make sure everything was up to date and you could just do that and that's easy it's fine everyone can do it. Um, on Windows 10 X, so you can't you can't do anything. Anything that I described is impossible. So yeah. I yeah. I don't even know how you get the Surface drivers on this system. So I don't know. I'll talk to Raphael about this. I'm not sure what happened, but it's interesting. I like. I really really want to test this system on real hardware. So mm -hmm. this is appealing to me. That's also how you become more adept technically is doing this stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I used to yeah, do yeah. a lot more of it when I was younger because. Turns out when you're sure. younger, you have a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, uh, right. Someone asked me one time, like, what did I, when I had an Amiga, like, what did you used to do on this thing all the time? This was before the internet, right? And I'm like, I don't know, but I spent hours and hours, hours. doing it. I, 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 would I can't type remember in, it. Like, you probably it. typed in yeah. listings from magazines, you know, 8,000 oh, totally lines of like basic yeah. code, yeah. things like that. Sure. You know, as you get, it's funny because when you're younger, you have time. And when you're old, you have time. I'm getting yeah. close to yes. that point where I can, you know, <laughs> I have, I'm going to have more time. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I, but then it's going to be too late for me. I'm going to look and I go, I can't do that. No, you're <laughs> just going to go back to making masks. I'll go back to sewing, <laughs> cooking, that kind of stuff. And if a recipe is too complicated, eh. Never mind. Uh, listen, we've all had dicey experiences with computers, like uh, sure. like flashing an Android device is sure. one of the scariest things I've ever done. Yeah, uh, there's nothing like seeing like a like a plain text thing come up come up on a phone that you know you're not in Narnia anymore. Or whatever. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like you know, it's it's strange. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and right before the show, uh, yeah. another dev channel build came out. I don't know. You have probably haven't time to do anything with it, right? It's not much in nothing. it, really. Oh, okay. Yeah, not much there. Not, uh, nothing to rush out and install. No, so there's like some touch keyboard um, tweaks, and then there's a bunch of fixes. That's kind of it. It's a dev channel build. That's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But what is, you know, this thing plus um, what's going on? I know. You're like, what is going on, right? Yeah, like what's going Like what's, every week we just, I keep I waiting for some some sense of clarity, you know? At some point, they're going to have to start dropping in features that are going to be in Sun yeah. Valley. Like things that are, like some of these things well, or, that are in or, there now are, but just, like very obvious. just 20H1, or 21H1. Yeah. At some point, they're going to have to right. say, okay, look. This At some point, that's going to go to beta is and testing release. this thing. Right. And so, right. right. So the day that they move that code for 21H1 into beta or and or release preview is when we know, okay, they, that's what 21H1 is. We know that whatever that few amount of features are that people are testing, that's it. So, uh, but they haven't done that yet. We don't know when they're going to do it. And then, then at that point, you can feel more sure that what's in the dev channel is more likely to be some of the bigger features that are going to be in that release in the second yeah. half of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. I know it's, we don't really, it's, it's this not knowing yeah. period and knowing that things yeah. have changed. Like they, I think they are justifying not telling us because they're like, we never told you things have changed. We never said 21, <laughs> 21 H1 would be anything. Uh, we never said if there would be one, wouldn't be one. We never said anything. So I think they, they're just saying, you know, you guys found this out on your own. So you're on your own. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I feel like. <laughs> that sounds like punishment. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, yeah. yeah, you had to go get the leaks and like find out our engineering sure. schedule. So, yeah. Okay. You so we're going to make you guys wait. stuck in the cookie jar. You figure, you figure it out. out. <laughs> you figure. That's very parental of them. It is. Yeah. You, you figure it out. We're, we're attributing an, uh, some adult behavior here that is not happening. I just want to be really clear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's take a little break. Uh, more to come. Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com or ZDNet blog. Paul Therott from Therott.com. His last book is available at LeanPub.com. His new book latest, will latest, be. Latest. Latest is not last. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to get that right. When I talk to Lisa right. and I say, you're my last wife, I don't want to say you're my latest wife. That would be <laughs> That so would be positive. Good. Yeah. yeah. You're my previous wife and potentially a future <laughs> wife. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it was in Larry King's obituary, they said he married eight times to seven different women. And I thought, <laughs> I have to figure yeah, out. Wait, is that true? Yeah, and it yeah, is. It he was. married somebody twice. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Richard Burton and Liz Taylor. It's uh, so good they did it twice. Our show today brought to you by ESET, an old friend, a familiar name, uh, but in a kind of a new role. I, you know, I, I always talk about this. I, we have a wonderful uh, IT guy. He's not a, he's a, you know, he's a managed service provider for a bunch of companies, including some wineries and stuff. And I talk to Russell all the time. And every time I see him in the studio, I say, are we safe? It's that, what is that from? That's the, uh, uh, it's uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier as the dentist working on, was it Dustin Hoffman? And he says, is it safe? Marathon man. Marathon man. Is it safe? Is it safe? Is it, are we safe? This is a different context. Are we safe? Because I'm worried about not, you know, dental torture. I'm, although I have to say ransomware might be worse. And Russell always says, we're safe. I, finally, I said, how do you know? He said, he said, we, it turns out, no, I, I recommended, he said for years, uh, as a, a standalone antivirus because it's very light, very fast, very reliable, high quality. Uh, what I didn't know is we've been using it as an enterprise-grade security tool for years. Um, and I understand why. You know, it's, uh, for instance, uh, we have, I don't know how many, six machines for our editors. I think it's six uh, beautiful Dell Precision workstations. But, you know, because it's the edit station, I'm worried, you know, is that safe? yes. Because he said it's so light, we can put it on the editor's machines and it protects them fully, but it doesn't slow them down. That's the last thing you'd want when you're doing, you know, video rendering and editing. He said has a couple of new developments I wanted to tell you about. There's something called, it's a brand new endpoint security management platform. I'm sure Russ, Russ will be rolling this out. It's called ESET Protect. And one of the main features is the new ESET Protect Cloud 
And this is exactly what you'd want as an MSP. A cloud-based management for businesses of all sizes with no restriction on seat sizes. So when Russell installs it, we like it because it doesn't matter how many seats we've got. He likes it because he's always moving around, and but he can't anywhere manage our security. I love that. He said protect also takes security to a whole new level with some new bundled products. Uh, these new bundles featured enhanced protection against ransomware. Yay. Zero-day threats. Yay. Plus full-disk encryption capabilities for Windows and Mac OS. And these bundles can save you. Right now, you can save 20%. On these new bundles, ESET Protect and ESET Protect Cloud. So you're not only getting best-in-class cloud-managed protection against advanced attacks, you're enjoying a significant discount. Now, you may say, well, how can they protect against zero-day? Hmm, that's the, that's the thing we use that I really like, ESET Protect Advanced. This is the bundle that has all the security you need along with a cloud-based management console. Endpoint protection, got to have that, especially now. Cloud sandboxing, this is how they do the zero-days. Uh, this is this gives them advanced threat detection and prevention because when they see an attachment, before they allow you to download it to your machine and up and open it, they they put it in the cloud in a sandbox. They run it, they execute it, they watch its behavior. So if it's a zero day, they can see it. They don't have to have the virus definition to know it's bad. They can tell by its behavior, and they do that in the cloud in a sandbox, so it never touches your machines. And then if everything's okay, you can download it and open it. And then file server security, a cloud-based console. Russell likes that because he's often at the wineries. I don't know why he goes to those wineries all the time, but he does. If, he, <laughs> if you'd rather have on-prem management, the ESIP Protect also offers that. Either way, you're getting powerful, reliable security based on 30 years of research and innovation. I've always said ESIP's the best. It's even better for business. And, and I'm proof because I never even noticed it's like, you're, we are, we're running. I didn't even notice. Highest ratings in the AV comparatives, endpoint protection and responsive comparative report. Of course, uh, they earned the rating of strategic leader. Uh, I'm not surprised. Get your free ESET business trial and an interactive demo, business.eset.com slash twit. And if you decide to take, take a bundle, you'll save 20% on those ESET Protect bundles. This is a limited time offer, though. Trust ESET to future-proof your business. Thank you, ESET, for protecting us, for supporting Windows Weekly. Thank you, dear Windows Weekly listener, for using business.eset.com slash twit so they know you saw it here first. On we go with the show. Edge 88. That sounds like that's a good name. Get your <laughs> kicks on Edge 88. Right. It's like a radio station. Yeah, You're Edge 88. Edge 88. <laughs> Light rock, less talk on Edge 88. <laughs> News on I the just eights. got Edge 88 today, you guys. Ooh, when, I turned, wow. when I opened my browser, it said, you have a new yeah. version of Edge. I really like, all the browsers stuff. do that now. That's so important. They auto-update. It and is. I, I, and, I, and they tell you what's in it. Yeah, which is good. really good. I'm, I'm glad to see Microsoft doing that. I know. Uh, so anything? a lot of these are features that were already being tested in the Canary and um, what's the other channel called? <laughs> Dev? The beta, right? Dev, in whatever. Yeah. Beta. I know. There's so many names. Um, but this now they're rolling out to the, the stable or mainstream channel. Yeah, so there's a few things worth noting. Password generator is in there, a built-in password generator, which is nice. Um Password monitor, which we heard about a long time ago, March 2020 is when we first heard about that. So that's not like a password manager. It's more telling you if you, they see your credentials have been found on the dark web and like saying, hey, maybe you want to do something about that. Uh, the one we talked about last week, sleeping tabs is in there. Um but Paul, Paul, Paul had some objections to sleeping tabs, but then a reader s sent us something on Twitter saying, hey, they're testing a way for you to not have that pause automatically. Like you can toggle that off, I believe, Yeah. in yeah. one of the updated versions of yeah, uh, Canary. Yeah, i that you can configure yeah. it. It's just, I... Yeah. I, I mean, for me, it'll be good because I don't really get my what? notifications in my tabs. What's the matter, Paul? You seem unhappy. He doesn't so, like that feature. There are two <laughs> major ways this impacts me. Uh, what, let me look at my browser tab. So um, I don't get notifications, right? Yeah. Um, so if I get like a new email or a tweet or something, I don't get apprised of that. And then um, my feed reader, which I use the old reader now, but um, doesn't 
same thing. I, I I don't know when there's new stuff happening, so I could I could miss out on. Yeah, see, I turn topical. off. I hate browser notifications, so that doesn't bother me, me at all. I shut them well, these all are like But that's a good point. Yeah. If it's like, sleeping, it's not going to get. You're not going to get any yeah. notifications yeah, from it. Not. So the problem with it is like you can you could manually go and look at your tabs, but when you do, they they reload as if they're being loaded mm -hmm. for the first time, and then you're like, oh, I great, I had a notification. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would just turn yes. it off for the handful of sites yeah. that I use regularly, you know. Yeah. Um, the weirdest feature that was in here <laughs> in this new version is being able to have a smart tile for Outlook that you can see um, yeah, on the, on the Bing page. page. Yeah, yeah, on the new, new tab, tabs page. The new tab page. Yeah, new tabs page. So that if you wanted to, you could have that on your new tabs page and see your latest three incoming emails just show up there. But I guess I guess that's one of those stay in your flow features that I don't really <laughs> well, care about them. I actually, so I'm not going to use that, but I, because yeah, uh, I don't new, even use the new tab page, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't mind. That, that's interesting. I mean, uh, they're turning that page into a kind of a dashboard. And, you they know, are. we talk a yeah. lot about that office app and the Windows uh, 10X start menu or whatever, where you yeah. have, you know, icons, obviously, and then you have, you know, recent documents. It's kind of like a dashboard, you know. Right. Um, having that there is actually not a horrible idea. Um, I leave yeah. mail is one of the things I leave pinned as a tab in my browser Me too. window. Same. Um, I, I have it so down in my task. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this could replace that, you know, for some maybe. people. For know. some people. Yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're one of those it, people no, who I, use, yeah, if you use the, um, you know, be signed into Bing and so you can see all your recent documents at the bottom of, of the yeah. new tabs page. Yeah. That might right. make sense for you then. The, the big thing then, here to me is, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mention the history and tab syncing. That's also in this. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. actually the big thing to me. So yeah. I, I, not coincidentally, because Microsoft released, you know, it's kind of like, you know, released a version of Edge into the stable channel a year ago mm. this month. So we're at, this is the one year anniversary. Um, oh, right. But that version was horribly incomplete. <laughs> like, I mean, horribly yeah. incomplete. I know. To the tune where it didn't even do history and tab sync, right? right. So, and other sync. I mean, they've added other things that sunk, sunk uh, that synced over the <laughs> intervening months. But uh, now I would say with the addition of history and tab sync and obviously other features they added, collections mm -hmm. and so forth, the password manager stuff that uh, Mary Jo was talking about, um, I would say it took a year somehow or yeah. two years, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but now edge to me is mature and mainstream. You know, it's to me now it's, it's ready. All these features though, I just listed are in the desktop version and the Mac version, right? Like they're for mm -hmm. windows seven, eight, 10 and the Mac OS version of credge, but not on the phones, right? Like some of them are maybe on the phones. Um, but, you yeah, know, even though right. they call that edge on the phone, it's not really the same edge as on the desktop, just like the Outlook sure. problem, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, some of those things are coming soon or coming at some point to your mobile device as well. But the things we just described now are, are all things that are in the desktop. Yep. yep. Um, and then... Uh, you know, we mentioned Edge up front because it's Microsoft, but this week has just seen an unbelievable level of browser updates and news. Um, Chrome 88 is also out. That actually came out last week. Also has password improvements. Interesting, similar to Edge. Mm -hmm. um, Chrome OS 88 also came out this week. Um, the cool thing there, if you use a Chromebook, I, and I actually think this is really cool, is um, you can configure it to go to a smart display display when it uh, locks automatically, like when you're not using the computer. So if you're familiar with like a Google powered smart display, like the thing we have in our kitchen, it can look just like that and work just like that. So your computer is idle, but the screen stays on and it will do like a photo slideshow and you can talk to it. And I, <laughs> I actually think that's kind of genius. It's it never even occurred to me. It's good. That's a good idea. Um, and then related to this, uh, there is a bunch of uh, PWA news this week, which is kind of interesting. Uh, most of it's good news. Uh, one of it is very bad news, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, on the Microsoft Edge front, uh, Edge will now support uh, profiles in PWAs. And profiles are a way to switch between you know users, essentially, user accounts in the browser. 
And Edge has some interesting features related to that. Well, it will do automatic profile uh, switching if you go to a, like you're logged in with your Microsoft account, but you go to a work site, it will automatically sign you into your work account there. You can do that kind of thing. Um, but the the big effect of that on PWAs is, is that you could have something like, say, Twitter open three different times, each with its own profile, each signed into a different Twitter account um, or whatever site or app you want to use. So I, I, that's actually kind of a big feature. That's a big deal. So that's kind of neat. Um, Google added offline support to Google Calendar. It's kind of basic. Um I think it sees maybe three weeks worth of events and you can't actually start new events or anything like that. So it's it's basic, like I said, but at least it's uh, getting there. Um, YouTube became a PWA this week. Um, nothing special there. There's no downloading, no offline support or anything like that, but they're taking that step. Uh, YouTube Music became a PWA sometime last year. I don't remember when, but I think it was quite some time ago. And then the bad news. Um so Mozilla this week released uh, Firefox uh, 85. Yeah. I think is the version. Um, unrelated to that, Google also revealed that they were killing the PWA feature that I used as a tip about two weeks ago, I think. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is kind of a, this is kind of a tough one um, because, you know, you, you kind of want to support Firefox, you know, because of what they are and what they mean to the web and everything. And they just can't seem to understand, to me, one of the most basic issues with the web is that these things need to become apps. And if you're just running it in a browser, I mean, I just don't understand the point of what they're doing. So uh, what they basically said is, well, not what they literally said is there's currently no plan for a PWA support in Firefox yeah. and they're killing the site-specific wow. browser. There's features, been a lot of conversation uh, about this, as you might imagine. Um, yeah, yeah, they should be. And, uh, you know, I think it had to do also with the, the difficulties that Firefox is having in general. Um, yeah, a lot I mean, of they announced this a, a while yeah. ago, you know. Yeah. 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 Huh. So that's just kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was in their in their bug. I was looking and reading in their bug reporting back in December about this. But it, wanna, it was never uh, like it was uh, uh, this SSB feature. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it was never uh, you had. A, it was kind of like a hidden preference. And it, most That's right. importantly, it was That's buggy. Right. And okay. um, so and I think a lot of this is that they decided not to support a, a buggy hidden feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. I, I mean, it, it was buggy and it's the wrong direction own design. Yeah, I mean, you no, know, no, it's the wrong there. direction. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, and they so, and they announced with this no plan for PWA support going forward. So, hmm. yep, hmm. yep. Now remind me again what you guys do for a living. Yeah. <laughs> I know it seems like PWA support would be central to your yeah, mission, but right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is yeah. tough, and I, I, I have a. I don't know if it's an app pick or a tip related to this later, but um, I, uh, listen, uh, there th there was a poster of the people who supported Firefox when it first came out and my name is on that poster. Like I have, uh, I've always uh, felt very strongly about Mozilla and what they're trying to do. And, uh, you know, they've had some ups and downs, obviously, but I, I this, I, have, I just don't understand. They were in the forefront of this, right? Um, they, several years ago, they had this capability. They were the only browser that had it. Uh, now they're the only browser that doesn't have it, basically. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's odd. It's confusing. <laughs> well, and that's yeah. what a lot of people said is, I guess it's over for me with Firefox. Everybody wants yeah. to support Firefox, yeah. but they're struggling because of the success of right. Chrome and yeah, Edge. So two years ago, remember when Microsoft made this announcement that they were switching to Chromium and there was a big kind of ideological debate and, and uh, Mozilla kind of lashed out at Microsoft and now there's going to be like this monoculture on the web and blah, blah, blah. I basically, I wrote something at the time. I'd, I'd have to go look it up, but I, I wrote an article where I said, this is the end of Firefox. I mean, th this is a monoculture where there needs to be a monoculture where right. um, these companies should be competing in other ways with each other, which of course they are. Um and if Firefox had just maybe sucked it up a little bit and adopted Chromium themselves, they could have this functionality very easily. It's built in, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just, uh, I don't know. I just, at some point you're, 
you know, you're just going down the wrong road. Mm-hmm. So I just, I, I feel mm-hmm. bad about it. Cause I, like I said, I, I want to support this company and their products, but, um, I, I don't know. I just, this is, this should be core to what they do. And I just don't get it. Um, it's too bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that's the question is, is it worse for Firefox or PWAs? You know, like, uh, worse for Firefox. for Firefox. I think it's going to be worse right? for Firefox. Yeah. No, well, everybody else people, does it except them. <laughs> Right. I mean, and look, there are always going to be people who choose Firefox for different reasons and, and that's yeah. fine. Um, but I feel like there's an interesting or a very big cross section between the type of people who are technical enough to make that decision and say, this is Firefox is the one for me. Mm-hmm. They would want a lot of those people would want um, PWA functionality mm-hmm. beyond running it in a browser tab like any other web page. Yeah. They just would. And I just it, it's it's weird. They, this is the, an area where they should be leading. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> cheer. Let's cheer up. Let's cheer up. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Xbox. Yeah. First it was bad is, news. It's going um, good, man. Xbox. <laughs> Big, man. Yeah, so last Friday, Microsoft came out with a a kind of wormily worded post in which they described uh, assessing the value and pricing of services and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the net result was they were going to raise the prices on Xbox Live Gold. And um, by how much? Like a buck, right? Not. No, by like 100%. (laughs) Oh, they were going to double it. Oh. Yeah. uh, Almost. Yeah. I almost double it. Yikes. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And. This is kind of hard to explain, but sometime last year, they got rid of the one-year subscription. They just stopped selling them. Um, When questioned about this, Microsoft said, yeah, we're not going to sell those anymore. So they have one month, they have three months, and they have six months, right? So up up until, you know, two weeks ago, well, no, that's not true. Up until whatever time last year when they got rid of this, you could buy a one-year subscription to Xbox Live Gold for $60. Um, It was often on sale for $30, $35, you know, whatever. Um, I still have a card sitting here. <laughs> it's unused. Uh, that is a one year card, but they don't exist anymore. So the, the doubling of price comes from the theory that the, the new price of the six month subscription went up from $39.99 to $59.99. Two of those would be one year is $120. That's double the, the old price. But the individual subscriptions versus the old pricing did not go up. A hundred percent. I mean, three month subscription went from twenty four ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine. You know, um, the good news is, uh, less than twenty four hours after announcing this, Microsoft said they were just kidding and they rescinded it. <laughs> so, so what the hell uh, happened? I'm, you know, this know. is the weirdest story. Uh, yeah. So you what, know what happened this was, happens all the time, doesn't it? Like, yeah. remember when this happened with so, Bing jacking and all this? I mean, there's just like so this many must be like a here. Simpsons Mensa word for. <laughs> Room of smart people making bad decisions, right? Yeah. Like, you know that yeah. all the decisions maker, makers over there are pretty smart people, you know? Um, yeah. Xbox Live Gold, the price has had not changed other than getting rid of the one-year subscription uh, ever or, you know, in many, many years. I don't remember. It's been a long time. It's been that price forever. I mean, so um, I think one of the lessons here is if you're going to raise prices on things, uh, do it over time. Yeah. Don't just double the price one day mm-hmm. semi-arbitrarily. <laughs> the other thing is Xbox Live Gold is uh, like a lot of things that Microsoft does, like the difference between a, uh, Windows 10 Home and Pro feels fairly arbitrary. You know, um, how do you justify the price increase? So Xbox Live Gold versus the free version of Xbox Live is uh, multiplayer gaming with matchmaking. Um, you get those Xbox Live, um, I'm sorry, uh, games with gold games every month, right? Um, But now that they have Xbox Game Pass subscriptions, which granted are more expensive and I'm sure more lucrative for Microsoft, um, there are very concrete advantages to those subscriptions versus Xbox Live Gold, most notably the incredible library of games you get, right? And uh, which is not just the hundred whatever games that Microsoft supplies, but dozens of games from EA Play. Uh, Those games from Bethesda are all coming online or most of them actually probably already are. Um, You know, that's the, the value there is so obvious the value to Xbox Live Gold is like, eh, like, why do they even have this thing? You know, why not just get rid of it? 
it doesn't seem to make any sense, but they, you know, maybe doubling the price was their passive aggressive way of getting rid of it. And like a year from later, they would have been like, you know, we were going to keep going, but people stopped paying for it. So we're just doing what the market wants, you know? Well, you know, Um, a lot of cynics said the reason they did what they did was so they could say like, look at, we're listening to customer feedback. I'm like, guys, if that's how they're doing this, right? Come on. (laughs) We'll say something completely outrageous. And then you tell us what you think. I'm going to crash the car on purpose. And my wife's going to be like, I really wish you, know you hadn't Give us that. that feedback. I'd done that. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to your feedback and I'm not going to crash the car anymore. I'm just saying, Chris Capitello, we know you're listening and we would like to know what the heck what you were you thinking. What were you thinking? I think, I, 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 geez, it just, I don't know. You Is know? it possible that uh, two different arms were at work and... Uh, yeah, maybe, right? That maybe. happens sometimes there. Big, it big does. company, like, sometimes the, you yeah, know, the left hand doesn't does know what the happen. right hand is doing, yeah. It the removal happen. of the one-year subscription X number of months ago, whenever that happened, sh- was the beginning of the talk of, oh, are they going to be getting rid of this, you know? Mm. Uh, that that's when we started talking about it, and then of course Xbox uh, Game Pass really started happening last year, right, with Ultimate and um, mm-hmm. you know the cross platform stuff. So, and the game streaming. I mean, it's all coming together. They're going to get rid of Xbox Live Gold. No, we're going to double the price. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> well, okay, but surely there will be additional <laughs> features of this subscription to justify it. No, just the same same crap, huh? Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Plus, by the way, not to mention, right a, right in the middle of a pandemic, right? Game business right. is going blockbuster. People are paying more for subscriptions of every kind, entertainment related. You're going to double the price of this thing and make make people say no to it now? I mean, like what? Crazy. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, you know, our, I'm, I'm totally Monday, Monday morning quarterbacking it, I guess. But I, <laughs> I it, it feels to me like this thing had been in the works for a long time and man, did it not land well. So do we, is there nothing to fear? I don't know fear, but there is nothing to worry about for now. For now. <laughs> they're, they've, they've said they're not going to. Well, sometimes what happens with this is they go, oh, that didn't go over well. Let's just wait till it calms down and then we'll, yeah, do, we'll do it exactly. again. Yeah, exactly. Or do it some Look, other way that's like hidden. Yeah. Sneak it in. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make it less of an increase. I mean, oh, by the way, just get rid of it. It's it's, yeah. it's, it's like you're at a movie theater with a attractive person and you go, oh, I'm just going to yawn and put my arm around. <laughs> and, and then you go, oh, no, I, never mind. I didn't mean that. Oh, no, I was just, uh, just scratching, uh, my, scratching my back. Yawning. Yawning. <laughs> yeah. Just yawning. <laughs> just yawning. Uh, it was, you already mentioned it, but we should, you know, I should mention it. It was a very good quarter for Xbox. Biggest, biggest quarter ever. Uh, yeah, I think it. I yeah. believe it was. They, they they said it was literally the biggest console launch quarter they've ever had. Wow! So it's console sales they're talking about. Well, they're talking about everything. It's but just, their games, uh, games console yeah. subscription, game services. All of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everything is everything was up. But I mean, imagine if they could have if they'd had the supply of Xbox <laughs> that they wanted, yeah. what it could have been. Right, yeah. right. But you know what? I honestly, for the business, I actually think it's better to stretch this thing out because if they if they could have literally met demand, right? Well, this is come this quarter right now would have been a nightmare. It would right. have just fallen off the face of the earth. Spread yeah. it out, so you would have four great yeah. quarters. I mean, not, not again. It Instead wasn't one, a strategy. I, I yeah. But I feel like it was the it's not the end know, of the it world. Might work out better for yeah. them. And then uh, the month is the shortest yeah. month of the year has the most game shortest titles. Shortest month of the year. Yeah. Oh no, this Not is yet. still this is still, we're still talking January. <laughs> I'm talking no, February. No, I'm sorry, this is next month. I'm talking I don't know what you I don't know where you're living. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Did I I'm talking February. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So this is for next month. I'm sorry. I mean, I uh I you just have a little typo in the notes. notes. That's all. It's no big. No big. I can't keep it all straight, guys. Five. No. Come on. <laughs> Five game with gold um, titles. Yeah, so I just was explaining how terrible Xbox Live Gold is as a, uh, a subscription service, but here's a huge benefit, um, which you also get as a Game Pass Ultimate uh, subscriber. So usually, as you know, you get four free games with the subscription every month. Um, for February, they're giving away five free games, which is kind of cool. Uh, Gears 5, obviously, Blockbuster title. And then I, there were two titles in here from the past that I think are notable. Uh, one is the original Resident Evil, um, which must have, must be like a remastered version for Xbox One, um, is available as of any day now, Sunday or whatever, probably Thursday, Friday, but whatever. And then um, Lost Planet 2, 
kind of a big Xbox 360 title uh, from back in the day, <laughs> you know. And then even an original Xbox game, uh, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, which um, is almost certainly older than the most recent Indiana Jones movie somehow, <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, right? Um, Does, do these, with, you know, I've, I haven't played any of these OG Xbox games on yeah. my, I don't have obviously Series X like you do, but uh, right. on my Xbox One X, uh, do they? Does it look kind of like eight bit? I mean, it doesn't look that bad, right? How bad does it look? It's not eight bit bad. Um, <laughs> it's probably what do you I, maybe Nintendo Switch? Okay, uh, well, maybe. you know, I spend hours every day on my Switch, so you know. I mean, these titles would you got to remember when the Xbox 360 launched, right? The second console. Originally, out of the gate, it was 720p was kind of the target, and right. then it did 1080i if you had a special right. adapter of some kind, and then eventually they added 1080p. So, Xbox OG Xbox, I mean, 720 it would it would have been below right six. What, what do you? I don't even know what you call that. SD resolutions of some kind. I don't know. SD's pretty no. bad. SD's 400 lines. That's pretty bad. Well, I mean, it could be. Variable. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't know. But it's, uh, you can only I'm, upscale so much, right? I would be um, a, a, a proud, happy Game Pass subscriber if I could have just gotten a Series X. Chris. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, okay, they did it to me again. <laughs> uh, yeah. This week I saw. Did you ever, did you get one? Did you ever get a PS5 or anything? Nope. So you never well, got any of the new gen All of this stuff is console. in short supply, yeah. Um, I, you know, I saw, I can't remember it was Walmart or somewhere. Oh, oh, we got Xbox series X in stock. By the time I got there, sure. sold out. Yeah. It looked like a, <clears throat> a post-apocalyptic nightmare. The whole place was destroyed. <laughs> sold out. Well, it was online. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's not, I've given up on, on it, but uh, boy, just think how many they could have sold. I figured there's gotta be a few people like me. <clears throat> oh, I think there's more than a few. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, we're going to uh, do the back of the book. We're going to do the tips, the tricks, the beer. We're going to do all that good stuff in just a moment. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor, if you don't mind. I'd like to take over the broadcast to tell you all about worldwide technology. We love worldwide technology. Big, big fans. Lisa and I went out there in March to see the amazing Advanced Technology Center, the ATC. WWT, you know, I think I should probably explain. <laughs> I talk about WWT all the time, but I don't really explain what it is they do. They're one of the top technology solution providers in the world. They deliver business and technology outcomes to large private and public organizations, and I mean everywhere, all over the globe. WWT is in the business of digital transformation. One of the ways they support organizations making those digital transformations is by helping them with the cloud. And specifically, I mean, they can do um, cloud in a variety of ways, but one of the things people really seem to want and talk to WWT a lot about is multi-cloud architecture. And now this is, of course, an order of magnitude more complicated than just saying, well, I'm going to go with one cloud. But there are a lot of good reasons to do it. And WWT takes the complexity out of this. They, they, they will be with you from the beginning to the end, from cloud vision, you know, just let, what do you want? What are you looking for? The strategy to the cloud enablement, even the migration, optimization, and management all the way through and everything in between. Their cloud consultants really take the time to sit down with customers, formulate a, a vision and a strategy, because they know that cloud investments only pay off if they're aligned to business goals. You can't just say, I want cloud. <clears throat> you you got to say, here's how it's going to align with what we want for the business. Business comes first, obviously, right? Uh, through, But that's sometimes a problem with technology. That's why you want a, a really trusted advisor with a lot of experience like WWT. Because they're not just going to say, oh, do the technology for technology's sake. They understand it's got to... It's got to help your business. Through briefings and workshops, WWT helps some of the world's largest organizations unravel the complexities of the cloud to unlock business opportunities. <clears throat> They're experts uh, not just in cloud migration, but application development, by the way. I, this is something that's funny. They, they, they barely told us. They told us a little bit about it when we were out in St. Louis. And Lisa said, well, why aren't you talking about this? This is really 
uh, great stuff. No matter what it is, WWT creates a secure landing zone in any cloud with on-demand labs at the ATC that give organizations access to tools for microservices, cloud-native development. Once you're in the cloud, WWT helps with cloud management and optimization. The, the cloud, their point of view, and I think it should be yours too, is the cloud is a continuum. <clears throat> you don't just flip a switch and you're done. You got to pay attention continuously to what's going on. And WWT will help you do that painlessly. Whether a strategy calls for cloud native, hybrid cloud, on-prem resources too. Don't think they're cloud only cloud. No, no. They do it all. And by the way, in every case, they work closely with a name you know, Intel, to optimize for the latest cloud smart solutions based on Intel technology, security, performance, agility. For instance, they feature Optane, Intel's Optane persistent memory, and other Intel technologies, workload optimized to deliver affordable, large capacity and data persistence for solutions, supporting everything from VDI to data analytics. And one of the great things about WWT, they're there in St. Louis, in the heartland of America, but they work globally. And the ATC is a global 24-7 operation. So you can you log in, use those labs, read the materials anytime. <clears throat> it's always there for you. To learn more and discover why organizations all over the world, across every industry, and government too, turn to WWT to guide them on their cloudy journeys. Bring some sunshine to your cloud with WWT.com slash Twitten. By the way, I, I want to always say this. Create an account. It's free to access resources available through WWT's Advanced Technology Center ecosystem. That is half a billion dollars worth of equipment from every OEM, including Intel. WWT.com slash Twit Worldwide Technology, delivering business and technology outcomes around the world. We're always very happy to be partnered with WWT. Um, back we go to Paul and Mary Jo, and it is time now for Paul's Tip of the Week. Yeah, I don't. Sometime a year ish ago, sometime last year, Spotify started adding podcasts right to their app, and now they are testing audiobooks. And to kind of see how this would go over, they have I think nine free titles that are available. I believe they're for everybody. You don't have to be a paying subscriber um, if you want to test out audio books in Spotify. So you know. Why not? <laughs> right. Uh, Frankenstein is in there. Uh, Red oh, Badge of Courage, oh, Jane Eyre, uh, Great Expectations. If it's not obvious, these are all in the public domain. Um, but the Spotify versions are unique to Spotify and they're read by new people or whatever. So, for example, Hillary Swank uh, oh. is reading uh, The Awakening. Oh, um, that would be great. Forrest Whitaker is reading a uh, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's free. Just give it a shot. Anyone can do it. You don't have to be a Spotify person. You just want you have some free content. They're just eating the world. They really are. I feel like <laughs> it's all going yeah. their way. Yeah, this is interesting because, you know, you see uh, podcasting has kind of appeared everywhere as well, right? So... Audible has added podcast support and Audible has Audible original podcasts and things like that. Amazon just bought Wondery, as we know. Um, Spotify has bought up a bunch of uh, podcasting, uh, podcasters and podcast studios as well. So, yeah, it's all mixing and matching. Yeah, there's, you know, it's uh, it changes uh, our experience, too, because we're independent, right? And so... Yeah. You know, I, I think about how... Uh, but, you know, so, so are you, Paul. You're an independent blogger. The same thing happened... With the with you know the blogosphere, uh, the the big guys like Engadget and Vox came along and uh, right. I guess you're not completely independent, but you're not. Um, well, we're still. We're, I'm a little guy. A little guy <laughs> for sure. I mean, but I'm you not, can make yeah. it as a little guy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's different paths. And then sure. and then Mary Jo works for a behemoth. So right. So you know, <laughs> but I guess I'm still if you wanted to suck so. a lot of <laughs> big tech like Mary Jo does, that's fine. <laughs> no, there's different. Uh, no, we're gonna. It's, it's gonna. It's gonna be an interesting few years for uh, independent, small independent yeah. podcasters like us, uh, because eventually, you know, all the advertisers are going to do is say, "Well, uh, you know, we want to buy podcasts." Oh, Spotify or Amazon, you know, yeah, or, I know, or Apple, I know. and uh, you know, we'll the, the pro so I don't mind big companies buying 
studios and talent and stuff like that. No, that doesn't happens. bother me. As long as it's available everywhere, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I that's my to, key too. Yes. This is a big problem. So that's not going to certain gonna, podcasts not continue, are only on think. Amazon. Yeah. Or certain that's, audiobooks are only on Spotify or right. however this works out in the future. Uh, this is a problem. Yeah. Because RSS, which is what we use and what podcasts traditionally used, yeah. has a problem. It doesn't give you any information about who's listening, right. when they listen, how long they listened, where they live, what their income is, how much they, you know, yeah. how many cars they own. None of that. On the other hand, if you're a Spotify customer or an Audible or Amazon customer or an Apple customer, they know all that. So right. that's a big difference. And uh, I don't know. I think we're going to end up doing what you and a lot of people have done and, and looked at a subscription model. I think we may have to look at a subscription model at some point. Sure. Yep. It's been all right, right? You're happy with it? You still have ads. Right. I mean, I what's that? You still have ads. Uh, not if you're paying. Uh, oh, interesting. For the, oh. for the most part, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, it's. I think the weird dynamic is um, once you have customers that are paying, there are expectations. Yeah, and, I don't uh, like that. It is reasonable <laughs> to. I don't you want know, any for that to be the case, right? So, I mean, you're you're kind of beholden. Yeah. Uh, to people who are paying you. So, I yeah. mean, there, you know, there is that dynamic. I, I but that's a good uh, point. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> I know it sounds obvious, but it's, it, but it's, no, you know, when someone point. writes you and says, you know, I've been trying to get help on this support thing. Right. I'm a premium member. I expect it. What's going on. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately that, you know, I don't want to get an email like that, but I mean, I, of course I, you, know, you got to do it. What are you going to do? As uh, as uh, when I started uh, doing Twit, I said I don't I don't want to be beholden to the man. And Patrick yes. Norton said to me, "You know what, Leo? You are the man. There's no <laughs> so no. He said there's always a man. And yeah, there's, there's, there's no way to get out right. from under. It's just life, you know. Oh, it's like uh, paying off you know mortgage. You're like, oh my god, I'm finally free. Free. I still have to pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh. I mean, it's like you're never really free. You're never yeah. free. There's always a man. Uh, app, <laughs> app pick of the week. Yeah, so um, I'm actually, so I just, full disclosure, I'm not actually a Firefox user. I, I go back and reevaluate Firefox, basically every version they put out. Um, but this news, you know, this week, uh, today, whenever it was, or what, uh, that I chose to write about today, I guess just tied to 85, because like Leo said, it didn't actually just happen today. But this news about them abandoning PWA is very alarming to me. And, um, I, and I know that there's a significant percentage of people, especially in this audience, the technical people who like Firefox for very good reasons. And I completely understand that. But I feel like, I just feel like they're being left behind of their own volition in many ways. And I feel bad about that, but I think we have to just look forward. And when I look at the landscape of web browsing today, from the perspective of a Windows user in particular, um, I really feel like there are only two browsers that make any sense at all. And one of them is not named Chrome, by the way. Um, you know, I, I also feel very strongly that Chrome exists almost solely to further uh, Google's advertising and tracking technologies and uh, that you should avoid using this browser. Um, Microsoft Edge is an excellent alternative. Um, and I'll just bring this up again. This is uh, something I reevaluate again from time to time as well is the uh, Brave browser. Um, if you care about privacy, and I think there's an, a really big segment of Firefox users that kind of fall into that category, you need to, and you're worried about where Firefox is going, you need to be looking at Brave. Um, Brave might be the new Firefox in some ways, except Chromium based. That thing I sort of felt like Chrome or uh, Firefox Mozilla should have done about two years ago. Um, at least look into it. Yeah, the problem um, is engines, right? So there's the Chromium yeah. engine, which Brave uses. Yeah. Edge uses, obviously Chrome uses. Uh, Firefox has its own engine, uh, right. which will die out. I mean, if Firefox dies well, out, it's the like engine... the Intel thing, right? This thing that used to be an advantage is now the thing that's holding you back. Yeah, that's right. You've you've, you've staked your claim to this differentiator, but the web is standards based, you know. And all people really care about is that when they go someplace, it works. It works right and it works fast. So now there's and, really um, two engines in the world. There's there's the well three maybe right uh, Firefox because of Safari. Yeah, WebKit, which uh, is actually yeah, WebKit, WebKit. Is, is pretty do it's almost as dominant, frankly, as Chromium. Yeah, because of mobile for sure. Yep. But there are a lot of WebKit browsers. What is Vivaldi? Do you remember? Vivaldi is uh, Chromium. Chromium uh, now as well. 
Yeah. So I should, I want to look at yeah, like Chromium some other uh, ones. or uh, yeah. WebKit and then, you know, Fire and whatever the Mozilla, what's Mozilla's engine called? Uh, Blink, I think, right? Or is that right? No. Um, Gecko? Gecko. Is it was Gecko. Gecko. Was Gecko. Okay, whatever it is, but the Firefox engine. Um, I, I just don't see, yes, so I just don't see them existing. I just don't, you know, it's, I, I, I have concerns, you know, for sure. <sighs> They're struggling, but it's funny. They still get, I think a hundred million a year from Google because of the default search. So it's like a divorce settlement. You know? <laughs> I, it, yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Gecko. We, maybe, they're, I, maybe they're getting ready to go to Chromium, and that's why they're mm, like maybe. taking features. I f out. You know what? The, well, the, here's the sad thing for Firefox. Honestly, at this point, if they said, you know what, things are going south, we can't afford yeah. to hire as many people. This seems like the, re the right direction, technically, politically, whatever it is. Unfortunately, of the people who are left that feel very strongly about Firefox, they would lose half their audience immediately. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If they said we're going uh, Chromium, they, you know, their audience, those people who really care about that thing that is Firefox, mm -hmm. a lot of those guys would say, yeah, I'm not doing that. You know? Yeah. I don't know where yeah. they would go, but. Right. Sleep near or something. I don't know. Sleep near. <laughs> I'm going back to IE 11. I feel like it was the apex <laughs> of the web browser market. The thing is, it's so hard to write a. A, an engine, the rendering engine. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's so much demand that be compatible so with thankless. everything. Yeah. That you thankless. really, pro I can understand we're going to narrow it down to a, 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 a maybe one or two or three at it, most you can't, engines. You, Microsoft tried and failed. You can't just continually yeah. try yeah. to fix or to get to a point where the competition already is. You're always behind. Right. Always. Right. Um, and I think Mozilla is just too small of an organization. Um, and, you know, they should know better. I, idealistically speaking, they can make a difference, could make a difference. Right. Um, but they've chosen politically or whatever to... Well, I think it's not economic. To, you know, I think they're struggling okay. as well. Yeah. yeah. So well, Gecko... I mean, if, if they weren't struggling, they would just keep doing what they're doing, right? right. And I yeah. guess you could defend that or not. But I, I two years ago, like I said, it, it's always... Ever since Microsoft's made the switch, I was like, no, they, Firefox is making a huge mistake. I want a fully open source browser. Now, admittedly, the, the Blink Engine in Chromium is fully open source. <clears throat> Gecko. But yeah. all of the whole Mozilla stack is fully open source. I right. can't remember if Brave is or not. Um, I, I think that's, I want to support open source. I hear you. Yeah. Opera's, Opera still uses uh, Blink. So Opera's using Blink. Have you heard of the new uh, Chromium drama? I didn't get no. into this in the web browser segment, but Google has uh, said that as of, I think, a month or two from now, they're going to pull a bunch of stuff out of Chromium that they f oh, are yeah, saying yeah. now shouldn't the have been there in the first place. Yeah, yeah. This related is, to Google Sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I have heard uh, that could be problematic. We talk about this I don't on think right now. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, Microsoft obviously has their own sync engine stuff. Um, Brave created their own, which I know because it was so terrible when it first came out, it was awful. Right. Uh, it's gotten better, but they, they're trying to do sync in a way that is privacy focused and, uh, you know, it's, it's probably blockchain stuff, right? oriented because they're very crypto oriented, mm -hmm. you know, they're big on, they yeah, have their yeah, own yeah. cryptocurrency and all of that. But this might impact. This will impact people who use like Chromium on uh, Linux, for example. Right. Because um, I don't think is Google, does Google Chrome is that actually available? Yeah, for Linux? you can run it. Oh, it is. I'm I sorry. would say okay. most Linux users don't want to, but you can. Yeah. Uh, I think most okay. of them use well, now Chromium. They're almost going to have to because. Yeah. You know. Uh, or they could use Firefox. <laughs> Firefox is the default on all the distributions yeah, I know of, yeah. uh, except okay. for Debian, because they call it Ice Weasel. It's really Firefox, but they, they there was a whole that's funny kerfuffle. They like customize it. <laughs> they, well, because Firefox Debian is aggressively community driven, and some of the okay. some of the terms in the Firefox license they couldn't get behind, so they forked it. And they call it Ice Weasel, <laughs> which I'm not. I'm frankly not a fan of. Yeah. Um, Brave is open source. I'm looking at it right <laughs> is now. Is that like so. the creature that was in the Ice Age movies? The little uh, yeah, the ice squirrel, squirrel thing <laughs> that kept screwing thing up. Mm. Uh, Chasing the nut. Let's go to Mary Jo Foley for her Enterprise Pick of the Week. Mary Jo? Yes. So today, in fact, the Dynamics Empire Platform teams put out the twi one of the two twice yearly plans that they do to give people a heads up about new features that are going to be coming for several months of this year across the platform. So the 
Dynamics 365 and Power Platform plans for 2021 release one, wave one. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, what these are, are they're, they're PDFs that list all the different features for the platform that they're going to roll out between April and September. So you, typically in the past, there's been several kind of big bang features where you're like, oh, that's good to know. So I went through the feature list today and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Pretty much everything on this list is incremental, um, like new regions, a new feature preview of something, or in some cases, features they've already announced at different shows um, that we already knew about for the platform. But if you're somebody who wants to see, like, here's the hundred new features coming to marketing, sales, customer service, finance, operations, you should go and get these PDFs and take a look at them. Um, on the Power Platform front, there's some new kind of incremental features coming to Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, virtual agents. But again, nothing I was like, wow, I really wanted to know about that. Um, but maybe that's good. You know, a lot of these are fit and finish, extending availability to more regions, um, kind of fleshing out things that were partially there that, that enterprises might want to take a look at. So yeah, the, the plans are out. Go check them out if you're somebody who cares about Dynamics and the Power Platform. Cool. The best way to find them is go to docs.microsoft.com and just search for um, Dynamics 365 and Power Platform 2021. That's the best way to find it. Wave one. Wave one. Here it comes. For this year. Here comes yeah, the then wave. In, then in uh, the fall, you'll get wave two with the right. next set of features. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, what are you Maybe. drinking? Do you, have, do you bring Nothing. enough for the whole, the whole podcast? <laughs> Is there enough for everyone? Yeah. Look, there's, there's almost none left. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Is that a, a commercially Satis. purchased uh, beverage or is that something that you whipped yes. up? No, or this Stephanie is commercially whipped purchased. What, do, you go to, do you go to Starbucks in the morning? I go to Dunkin' Donuts in the morning. Dunkin'. A, a member of the upper crust, Leo. It's I have to Dunkin'. Go to a... <laughs> That's right. I forgot you have this whole ritual. I completely forgot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have actually two enterprise picks, Mary Jo. Let's get the I other do. one. I do. Yeah. So the other one is about a conference. Well, I, it's almost like an unconference that people might want to know about. Um, it's been championed by our friend Rick Klaus. Uh, it's called IT Ops, All Things Hybrid. And the best way to find out about this is aka.ms slash IT Ops Talks. Um, you'll see a whole list of hybrid cloud related talks that Microsoft's going to be posting for free for anyone to look at on Learn TV on February 2nd. And to make this even more compelling, to put more ice on the IT cake, I might say, Mark Rusinovich is keynoting this. Ooh, I love Mark. That's He's great. Well yep. And so the the theme of these talks is you know, a lot of times when you go to virtual events, the talks are very short. They're not very in-depth. The people can't really engage as much as they might like with the people speaking. So they're trying to turn the whole conference idea on its head and do some things differently, like make the talks really, really in-depth. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I think this will appeal to a lot of IT people who have, have cloud topics and hybrid IT topics that they might want to know about. This is and it's free. good. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. February 2nd, 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Oh, crap. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft I know. That's Learn a, TV. That's Rusinovich. But you know what? Everything is also going to be available on demand. So if right. it doesn't fit into your schedule, you can go get it. Nice. Very good. Very good. Um, finally, it's time Fine. for... <laughs> Is it a dessert? Is it a beer? I don't know. I know. You tell me. Or is it both? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know, it's winter. It's time for some more dark beer uh, picks. And barrel-aged beers are always delicious because they're aged in bourbon barrels or wine mm. barrels or some kind of barrels. So Jack's Abbey in my hometown of Framingham um, makes a series of beers called Barrel Aged Framinghammer. Get oh, it? Oh, that's hysterical. It's a little pun on the town <laughs> name. That's great. It is. And one of their uh, beers in the series is called S'mores. S'mores Bourbon Barrel <laughs> Aged Framinghammer. So 
they add all these things into the beer when they're making it, like a little lactose, a little vanilla, a little cocoa bean, brown sugar, oats. Mix it all up with the beer, and you get a porter that tastes like s'mores. Or... As Jackie M says on Untapped, <laughs> yep. like a Yankee sure. candle. <laughs> I know, you know, you know, it's oh. kind of like cilantro. You know, some people think cilantro tastes like soap, and some people love it. Those it's people like are the fruit of the it. devil, and there's something wrong with those people. <laughs> it is, it is so dark and thick and beautiful. Very dark, thick, and Boy, you know, good. I, I am a, I am a huge marshmallow fanatic. Like I will have marshmallows on anything. I've even made s'mores bark myself um, and eaten most of it. So I, I think this beer is the perfect <laughs> yep. beer for a marshmallow lover um, and somebody who wants something nice and heavy for the winter, 12%. So not, not a light beer, but um, something that will be your dessert. Can I, um, I want to ask you uh, where you get your beer these days. I mean, normally you, you would go down to rattle and hum and you could try these beers. Yeah. How do you, how yeah. do you stay up on this stuff now? <laughs> so, um, luckily there is a beer shop really close to where I live called city beer that's still open and they have a ton of varieties. If you're in the midtown area, look for them because they even have outdoor tables and outdoor seating and it's always packed over there, um, with their outdoor tables. Yeah. But also, you know, um, a lot of takeout beer shops are still open in New York and you can go buy cans and, you know, bring them home and check them in untapped at home. Um, so that's I, um, what mostly what I, I texted, been doing. I texted Mary Jo on Friday night because the uh, bar <laughs> restaurant thing that we go to every week has an incredible beer selection. They have casks and, and all kinds of stuff. In fact, they br remember the, uh, what's the uh, place from New Harlem? Um, Yopin. Yeah. They had like yeah. a Yopin beer on tap. <laughs> I was like, what? Wow. But they crazy. had um, uh, whatever the blue Chimay is. Uh, they had Ooh, that I on like tap Chimay on blue. Friday. Oh, and I was yeah. like, look, I don't drink beer. But I said, can I get like a little... Oh half glass you know and they were like sure and i took one sip of it and i was like oh yeah and i gave it to my wife and i said you can drink the rest <laughs> i could i just too much it, right yeah yeah i mean yeah. it's it, it i the taste is familiar it's and it rich. was yeah yeah, I, yeah. yeah. but yeah. I, yeah, yeah i just don't drink beer yeah anymore. yeah wow that's a big Your shift for you paul our yeah. game my yeah. friend <laughs> if it doesn't have peanut butter i flavor. make it up with all kinds of other alcohol yeah you do you do <clears throat> Ain't got that peanut butter. I ain't drinking it. Oh, yeah, that peanut butter whiskey. Yep. Yeah. Oof, mm. it's so good. <laughs> Still drinking that, huh? So good. So good. I try to limit it. You know, you have to be careful. Like I said, yeah. you don't want to have a bad night and a more, a more awful morning. <laughs> yeah. This goes down too quick. It's yeah. just too... Yum, yum, yum. It's too good. You could have a peanut butter porter. Those are common in beers, you know, many beers. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No. I just have a peanut butter <laughs> cup. I'll be fine. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Folks, I know it makes me cry too, but we have come to the end of this <laughs> of this show. Um, Sorry. We just don't, we don't make them long enough. You know, we got to go for yeah, four. I think that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Love that ha bathroom breaks if we do that. Yeah. <laughs> have we worn yeah. out our welcome? Well, we'll be back next week. And are those people on the screen still? What's going on in here? <laughs> <They're> still there. <laughs> Our show uh, is really the manufactured from the creative, fertile minds of Paul Thorat. He's at thorat.com. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and his book, uh, The Field Guide to Windows 10, is available at uh, leanpub.com. Uh, the Other Mind is also uh, at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Her ZDNet blog, of course, that's Mary Jo Foley. Together they compose... Two minds, one body. The one book soon. One book. The quintessential. <laughs> the quintessential Microsoft covering duo. Someday she'll screw up and agree, and I'll, I will take that as no. a legal agreement, and on we will go. I never will. I never will. Never. <laughs> um, we do Windows Weekly uh, of, a, of a Wednesday morning around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that is 1800 UTC. If you want to watch it live, you can. I mean, the live production is a little bit loosey goosier than the final polished product we deliver but uh, sometimes people like it that way and you can go to twit.tv slash live there's live audio and video streams there if you're watching live chat live at irc.twit.tv on-demand versions of the show available at twit.tv slash dub dub 
for Windows Weekly. There's a Windows Weekly YouTube channel. You can watch and subscribe there. Best thing, in my opinion, get a podcast client. There's so many. Uh, and subscribe within the podcast client. That way you'll get it automatically on your phone, your device, whenever uh, it's available. So you don't have to think about it. You say, I think I'm going to listen to Windows Weekly. Oh, good. Here's a new one. Um, we are uh, wrapping up the survey next week. So once again, another plug, twit.tv slash survey 21. We'd appreciate it if you take it. Uh, it helps us uh, monetize, but also decide you know, what to, what to do with the network. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank and you, sir. Stay safe. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. I'm Ant Pruitt, host of Hands of Photography here on Twit TV. I know some of you have gotten yourself a brand new camera or you just had a camera sitting around and can't quite figure out how to get the most out of it. Well, I have a solution. My show, Hands on Photography. So subscribe right now to learn how to get the most out of that camera. I'm going to show you how to make those images pop. I don't care if it's a Canon camera. I don't care if it's a Sony, Nikon, iPhone, Android, even an inexpensive Android device. I got you covered. So head on over to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.